All right. So, um, humans have been walking the earth for hundreds of millions of years. Um, this correlates basically with what Elijah Muhammad just finished saying. Even though he said not just millions, not just billions, but trillions of years. Well, at least we know that we've been on here at least hundreds of millions of years, according to um, the history, the hidden history of the human race by Richard L. Thompson and Michael um, Creedmoor. And this is what Michael Creedmoor states. He said, over the past 200 years, the scientific establishment has selectively ignored, suppressed, and forgotten so remarkable artifacts and bones that contradict the dominant view of human origin and iniquity. Evolutionary prejudices have served as a sort of informational filtering system that has left us out, all right, left us out, mm -hmm. uh, left us with some <laughs> radically incomplete set of facts for building our ideas about human origins. The hidden history of the human race is a call for change in today's arbitrarily rigid mindset, deploying an un uh, um, unexpectedly great number of convincing facts, deeply illuminated with critical analysis. Readers will find themselves compelled to rethink our understanding of human origin, identity, and destiny. So you can find this information also in the larger version of the hidden history of the human race. It's called Forbidden Archaeology. And so this is what it said in there. They report a groove sphere from the pre cambrian South African miners have found hundreds, matter of fact, about 200 of them, of metallic spheres well underground, and at least one that had three parallel grooves running around the equator. According to the scientists, the spheres were found in um, 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 phyrophilic rock, which was mined in West Transville, Western Transville, South Africa, which is 2.8 billion years old. The spheres are, non -nat are not natural objects, and their origin is unknown. They obviously was created by intelligent beings. Well, 2 billion, almost 3 billion years old. Well, this is it here. Um, and you can also find information in this book here, When Nations Gather, by Sultan Abdul Latif. And he speaks about this. He said, many different artifacts have been discovered during the last century. During the late 1900s, one of hundreds of hollow metallic spheres was found in South African mining. All right? Once again, it was found buried in phyrophilic uh, rock, um, a mineral deposit that was found of formed by sedimentation around 2.8 billion years ago. Once again, 2.8 billion years. And this is what he said. Although it is believed that humans did not exist during pre cambrian time, it is obvious that an intelligent life form, earthly or extraterrestrial, created these fields. All right? So they say, because remember, they say that humans only got here about 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens sacred. About 300,000 years ago. And then they tell you, according to Zachariah Ascension and many others, that they was created, we was created allegedly by extraterrestrials, in which they refer to as the Anunnaki. This is according to the Sumerian tales. All right, they call these the clump drop of spheres. These are the same spheres of spheres in which that we're talking about now. This is the one particularly in the middle at the top. Um, with the three grooves around the equator, which that they was referring to. <clears throat> but also in South Africa, they found that two billion year old history in Africa was 16 nuclear reactors that was found in the 1970s. They never told us about that, but they was found 16 of them. So that like, means- Like that one movie they had it in. I hate two movies they had it in. Yeah. But here it is, two billion years ago, 16 nuclear reactors. So that's telling you right off the bat, right off the bat, that we was dealing with nuclear technology billions of years ago, not something new. Right, so um, you talking about 2.8 billion years ago, and yet, Three billion years ago, the early form of vegetation closely resembled the blue-green algae is allegedly the only thing that's supposed to be here. 
but yet we find an objects <laughs> date back 2.8 billion years ago. When the only thing that's supposed to be here 2.8 billion years ago, almost 3 billion years ago, was algae, blue green algae. That's it. All right, so blue green algae is the only thing that's supposed to be here that evolved at that time. And it says um, blue green algae, which can be seen today floating on the surface of ponds in the summer. That's all that's supposed to be here, according to um, physical uh, geologists or geophysicists. That's all that's supposed to be here. <laughs> but yet, we find an object named back 2.8, almost 3 billion years ago. And obviously, that was made by some intelligent being because somebody was smoking metal. It was smoking metal. How could they have done that? Look at that. That's, that's metal. Some type of metal. Some type of ore in which that somebody did as a design. Matter of fact, if you notice, this one here looks very similar to the Death Star from Star Wars. <laughs> I think that might be where um, he got that information from, um, George Lucas. All right, so what we do know is that during this time period, all the continents were together 2.8 billion years ago, and it was called Pangea. If we was on the planet Earth at that time, which obviously we were, um, at least as Elijah Muhammad said, we were, and so was our fathers. I'll show you who our fathers are in a second who he's referring to. He's talking about the Syrian beings, but we'll get to that. Um, who look just basically look just like us. We we look just like them. Okay. Um, so right here, it shows you that so-called black people inhabited all the regions of the planet: Russia, Asia, England, Italy, um, Romania, um, America, so forth and so on. And they show you that all the people that was on planet Earth, um, just even thousands of years ago on each of the continent parts before the European came upon the planet, which was only between 6,000 and 8,000 years ago, was us. That's why Harvard professor, Harvard University researcher um, and professor, um, he stated that Africans are the 100% pure human than the rest. Everybody else is a pure human, all right? We're the only ones that's 100% pure human. This is what he said, all right? Well, what they consider pure human actually is a um, hybrid of various extraterrestrial species. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that in a minute. But um, right here, a Harvard researcher declared that Africans are the only race that has 100% pure human DNA, while the rest has Neanderthal DNA in them. While this seemed controversial, another separate study concludes with the Harvard study. So this is coming from Harvard University, <laughs> All right? Dr. David Emil Wright, a genetic professor at Harvard and his colleagues analyzed the genetics variants of 846 non-African people, 175 people who lived in the Sub-Sahara region of Africa, and a 50,000-year-old Neanderthal man. They have found out that nine genetic variants found in humans are associated with specific traits that can be found in Neanderthals. The same genetic variants are the same ones responsible for such diseases as type 2 diabetes, Crohn's disease, lupus, um, optic disc size, and um, biliary um, um, cirrhosis, which is talking about um, bowel and the cirrhosis of the liver. Um, the Harvard researcher and his team also found that the Neanderthal genes affected how keratin filaments develop. As opposed to humans, um, Neanderthals have more keratin filaments than humans, making their skin tougher. This allowed them to survive in harsh, cold climates. 
The DNA was beneficial to the human survival in such climates. A separate study is conducted by Dr. Benjamin Vernat and Dr. Joshua Aki from the University of Washington yielded the same conclusion after the scientists analyzed the genetic makeup of 286 East Asians and 379 Europeans. So they tested all, they tested everybody who ain't even African. So they had to conclude that everybody else is a hybrid. Y'all not hybrid. But we are hmm, hybrid in a sense. Right, because we're not terrestrial. Right, but not on not just on Earth per se. So all right, we, I get to that. <laughs> so here, Harvard researcher Dr. Reich said that the goal of the study is to understand how the DNA impact the biological impact of how humans and DNA on um, Neanderthal DNA flow. It is also shows that the scientists what genes have been preserved and which ones have been rejected through the process of natural selection. So, white skin developed in Europe only as recently as 8,000 years ago, say anthropologists. Now, this is very close to what Elijah Muhammad said because he said about 6,600 years ago. <laughs> well, here it is. Scientists now support Elijah Muhammad's story of creation of Caucasian race around 6,000 years ago. So, he was a lion. So, I'm not going to believe a people who just got here 6,000 years ago about history of us being on the planet just 300,000 years ago when there's proof that we've been on the planet for almost 3 billion years ago, at least. <laughs> kind of hard to listen to that when there's evidence showing otherwise. And it's coming from their own sources. Here it is, Scientific American Magazine, June 5th, 1852 issue. Speaks about a report of the blast carried out in Meat Hill Rock in Dorchester, Massachusetts. The blast disgorged tons of rock, described by the United States Geological Survey, as put in stone dating back over what, 600 million years ago. A bell shaped metallic vessel was blown out of the rock that was about four inches high with this, and covered with exquisite carving, indicating the presence of an um, artistic metal worker over 600 million years ago. So, you think they would go back to 600 million years ago and tell you that we were smelting metal and designing, crafting, artistic, exquisite carvings? No. <laughs> but what do scientists say was going on 600 million years ago? Well, they say this is the beginning of about 600 million years ago that the fossil record testifies to the sudden appearance in complex shell and multi-cellular marine animals. So all of a sudden, the marine animal just came into existence out of nowhere. It just, they just became multi-implicit and it just, <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to understand what is taking place. We are creating these beings on planet Earth the whole time. This is what we was doing. We was creating life on Earth. So when they talk about Adam knew the names of all the angels in heaven or um, in the Quran, or when they say in the Bible that Adam knew all the names of, he named all the animals on earth, he didn't just name them, he created them. He made them. <laughs> he made the animals on earth. And this is what this is showing. Because not only were we doing exquisite carbon 600 million years ago, all of a sudden, they said the sudden appearance of complex shell. Now that means before this, it wasn't complex. This was simple, <laughs> animals, structures. All of a sudden, a sudden appearance of complex shell, multicellular marine animals came into existence. This is why the Bible says, God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life. This is once again, us creating and forming life on planet Earth. How we know? Because here it is. Strange artifact reveals history of a human origin is wrong. These artifacts are showing that human origin is wrong. Everything that they've been telling us is wrong in biology class, is wrong in chemistry class. A lot of it is, that is. In June 1936, Max Hand and his wife Emma 
were on a walk beside a waterfall near the London, Texas, when they noticed a rock and a wood protruding from its core. They decided to take the IT home and later cracked it open with a hammer and a chisel. And guess what they found? They found hammer! <laughs> inside, inside, can't touch this, inside <laughs> of, the, of the rock. So a team of archaeologists analyzed and, and dated it in the rock in case the hammer was dated to more than 400 million years old. The hammer itself turned out to be more than 500 million years old. So it says it was 96% iron. That is basically richer than any hammer in which that is made today. 96% hammer is iron? Of the hell? Okay. So here we are making hammers. Here we are now. Understand you gotta have opposing thumbs to do this. You can't you can't hold a hammer, just hold a hammer like this. <laughs> you gotta have some opposing thumbs in order to do and craft this. You got to have thumb. You got to have Thumbs. You see, in order to hold it, look, you see how he got to have the thumb to hold it? Unless, you know, unless we was holding it like this. <laughs> so you got to think about it. But they'll come with four types of craziness. Okay. So here it is. An ancient troglobite. Troglobite was stepped on by someone wearing shoes hundreds of millions of years ago. In the summer of 1968, an amateur fossil collector, William J. Miser, made the discovery of a lifetime 43 miles west of Delta, Utah. To his surprise, he found a fossilized human footprint, which was about the size of a 13 shoe. That's what I wear. Yeah. Stepping on a troglobite. Now, troglobites only existed between 260 to 600 million years ago. So somebody had a footprint. Okay. What kind of footprint was that? Shoes. <laughs> Not just a footprint. It was shoes. <laughs> More 600 million years ago? Shoes. So shoes just didn't come into existence. <laughs> they have proof of shoes existing between 260 to 600 million years ago. All right. Now, this is all that James Madsen could say dismissively. He said there was no men walking 600 million years ago. Neither were there monkeys or bears or ground sloths to make pseudo human tracks. So what man thing possibly could have been walking about on this planet before vertebrates evolved? <laughs> okay, let's see. It's gone. The greater the probability of genius within that group. So they tested the orangutans, these 15 geneticists from around the world. That now these geneticists came from nine different universities. And we have here on the cover of the pamphlet they put out the names of these geneticists. And you can see them right there right beneath right beneath the title of this pamphlet now this pamphlet most people have no idea what it means 
but breaking it down and after you study it and have it explained to you by a geneticist, a trained geneticist, you will find that they're talking about DNA series. Now here are the names of these 15 geneticists from around the world, University of Japan, University of China, Yale University is the headquarters of this organization called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And you see it down there. Now this was copyrighted in 1996. All right. I have a copy of it. What it said is this, and this is this is a mind-blowing part. It said that when they tested the orangutan, they found out he only had three DNA series. Three. When he tested the gorilla, they found out the gorilla has four DNA series, but they're a little, he's a little smarter than the orangutan. They tested the chimpanzee, which is an ape, and found that he had five DNA series. Then they went into, they went all into the different races of the world. They went into Europe and tested the DNA series of the English, the French, the German, the Spanish, the Russians, yeah, they had. and found they had six <laughs> DNA series. Yeah. Then they put all of this, what they found from around the world on a map. And this map really is called the intelligence map of the world because they tested 116 different human groups and found their DNA series number. All of them, all over the world, have six. six. And they put the numbers in form of a little flag that you can see on this map. These little flags have a color. And they show Oh, this is upside down. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And they show that the English have only six, and all into Europe, only six, went over into Japan and China, they only have six, over into America with a predominantly European, and they only have six. Then they came to Africa, and they came to the part of Africa. Now all the rest of them, they put in little flag colors. Those flag colors are, are orange red, if you notice. But when they came to Africa, found out that the African people have nine nine DNA series so from could you have here have just below the Shanghai Empire right, right. down <laughs> to the wow. foot of that. All those ten nations of which so African this is what we do know we have nine series of DNA Everyone else has six, and the animals have five, four, and three, as far as the so-called orangutan to the chimpanzee. But here we were, like you said, with shoes on. <laughs> 260 to 600 million years ago, Antelope Spring, Utah, print of a man wearing shoes in which the left foot had tra trotted down basically on a troglobite, a creature between 260 to 600 million years ago. So this is the troglobite right there. And that's the shoe print. Now this is still when we had Pangea, when all of the continents were together. So that means that we was able to walk across the, each continent. This is why you find us all over the world. Not just because we was able to um, sail, but because we was able to walk, we had shoes. <laughs> this is a man-made artifact found in 300 million year old sandstone. 
by this curator, John Taylor. He recently molded a series of depressions left by four strange objects that left behind impressions in hard Pennsylvania sandstone, a layer of strata said to be 300 million years old. This appears to be objects similar to moderate, what? Plumbing bowels. So we had indoor plumbing. <laughs> we had plum a plumbing system. 300 But they came and just million. invented everything, right? No, we didn't. Right, no, I know, I know. Just saying, <laughs> right. Right, sarcastically. Right. right. <laughs> but we had this 300 million years ago. They are finding out. So we had nuclear technology two, bi two billion years ago. We had plumbing. <laughs> 300 million years ago. So as the saying it goes, there's nothing new under the sun. We did, we done that. We've we been here, we done that. We did that already. You're not telling me nothing fantastic. Here it is, a 1944, a 10 year old boy named Newt, Newton Anderson dropped a lump of coal in his basement and it broke in half as it hit the floor. What he discovered inside defies explanation based upon current scientific orthodoxy. Inside the coal was a handcrafted bell alloy bell. Right? Inside the coal was a handcrafted brass alloy bell with an iron clapper and um, sculpture handle. When an analysis was carried out, it was discovered that the bell was made from an unusual mix of metals discovered from any known moderate alloy production, different from any known alloy production, including copper, Zinc, tin, arsenic, iodine, and selenium. Wow, that is kind of odd, isn't it? Because arsenic was used as part of a metal combination. The scene from which the lump of coal is mined is estimated to be 300 million years old. Once again, here we are creating these things millions and billions of years ago. And they're trying to keep us confined to a 6,000 to a 300,000 year period. When we've been on this planet for millions and billions of years. Proven. This 290 million year old human footprint has experts baffled. Don't have me baffled. <laughs> Doesn't have me baffled. This rock, which belonged to a premium um, period 299 to 251 million years ago, was discovered in New Mexico and features a human footprint left behind apparently nearly 299 million years ago. But there weren't any humans on Earth at that time, were there? <laughs> of course, there were. They left their footprint where they come from <laughs> 225 million years ago. We still had Pangea. So everything that I just talked about was still before the continents broke apart. Everything we just talked about was still before the continents broke apart. Now let's get to when the continent broke, began to start breaking apart because of um, large earthquakes in which that caused the, what they call the continental drift. Where we find that another human so print, shoe print, was discovered in 1927, preserved in Triassic limestone, dated back 225 million years ago. This is around the same time that this was occurring. As you see here, 225 million years ago, Pangea began to start happening. Early on, January the 25th, 1927, um, amateur geologist Albert K um, Knapp um, discovered a remarkable preserve hill more made a triastic line stone dated 225 million years ago. Kanat uh, spotted the fossil among some loosely rocks, which he was descending a small hill in Fisher Canyon, Persian County, Nevada. So, what is continental drift? Well, um, Wagener noticed that the coast of West Africa and Eastern South America looks like the edge of interconnected pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. Of course, all children have noticed that. <laughs> and so he comes up with the concept of Pangea, that at one time that all the planets had to have come or have been together. Here it is, in 1997, there was a case of a 200 million year old shoe print. All right, so we've been wearing shoes for a very long time. 
very long time we've been wearing shoes. We talking about 600 million years ago, we've been wearing shoes, all right? Discovered in a mountain, um, a red mountain in China. All right, one particular fossil day 200 million years ago had a shoe print on it. The school teacher discovered a fossil on red mountain in the room, the room the key, sent, um, city in 1997. The shoe print is a slate rock and measured approximately 10 inches. It is clearly a shoe print. On the hill mark of the shoe print, there is a prehistoric codfish fossil about five inches long. St. Louis, Missouri, for printing premium rock days back to 200 million years ago. In Barra, Kentucky, footprint in Pennsylvania rock days back 200 million years old. Let me get to the fathers. Well, here we have our fathers' footprints. <laughs> we seen 10 inches, 13 inches of 13 sooth um, shoe print. 10 inch shoe print, so forth and so on. We've seen those. That was us, and we still in about that same size today. However, our fathers was here at the same time who were the giants, who they refer in the Bible as the Nephilim, who was supposed to be the children between us and the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki. They, call, the they call fallen angels also. Who they call the fallen angels. Yeah, they call the Anunnaki as the fallen angels, those who came from above to here. But I also have another science to that, as we talked about, when the Kundalini energy goes up the spinal cord to reach and touch the pineal gland, that becomes the Anunnaki because the word Anu means on high, and the word Naki means serpent. So this is talking about the serpent on high. And this is what we see within the crowns of the ancient Egyptians when you see the serpent right here. That symbolized the Anunnaki and spirit. All right. So they themselves are saying that they are the gods in which that came from above, technically, as we all are, as we at this nine cities DNA. All right. Um, so here in Africa, you have Michael um Tallinger, as he's showing you here. I believe that's him, um, one of the guys there. And you see it in Russia, you see it in India, you see it in different parts of the world, these giant footprints in which that we um that we did. That's proof. Giant footprint discovered in China. All right, this is in Bangalore, Bangalore. Um, we've seen these footprints in Spain, Sri Lanka, Paraguay, um, Bangalore, um, Botswana, uh, Texas, Australia, t uh, Thailand, Canada, New Mexico, Russia, Alaska, Syria, Belize, and Cleveland, United States, mm. Cleveland, Ohio? Right. Wow. So this is why when the Bible says there was giants in the, in the earth in those days, and after that, when the sons of God came to the daughters of men and they bear children to them. The same became the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. Genesis 6, 4. So these are the fathers in which that Elijah Muhammad was talking about that was on planet Earth with us at the same time. All right, these skeleton figures represent just a few giant human remains unearthed and documented in historical records along with the historical accounts of the liars. Even though Goliath um, did not actually exist, um, there were giants in that area in those days. I can't say if his name was Goliath, <laughs> okay? But there was giants in the days, that, as they say, with Noah. Um, we know that Noah's story is allegorical, but anywhere between 16 to 35 feet tall or more, the giants before the floods was anywhere between 50 to 100 feet tall giants. But we have now, of course, Six feet, I'm six feet, so we got six feet present man. Then we have in Turkey, 15 feet. All right, even Caesar of Rome, um, Maxim, um, Caesar, 8.6 feet. Um, allegedly, according to the information in, in Samuel's um, 17.4, it speaks of Goliath being six, um, 10, six, 10, 10 feet tall, six inches. We have um, the king of Bashan. In Deuteronomy, who was as tall as 12 feet. 
Uh, we have um, 19.6 feet that was also found, 23 feet tall fossils, 25.6 feet tall fossils, and 36 feet tall fossils. And this is the called the Genia. So when we're talking about um, Hannibal, we don't know what line he came from. All right. <laughs> But here it is, even on the walls of ancient Kenya. They show you builders of the pyramids or giant people about the size of five to six meters tall. A six meter tall giant was able to lift 4.5, four to five tons of blocks. He go, a human next to the blocks in which they, they show you on the walls is being picked up very easily. Picked up very easily, right on the walls of ancient Egypt. So look, look, look on the world of ancient Egypt. They show you how tall we were compared to them. You can see that. See, this is what we had to do in order to get one block. <laughs> <laughs> Our father carrying that drum like, yeah, what's up? We got to, about what, four or five, about five of us, and then you got to push and the show yes. and yeah, and we had Not wheels and we had we had wheels and everything. Yeah, come on, <laughs> <laughs> that's how we that's how we helped. <laughs> that's how we helped our fathers. <laughs> All right, and of course, this father, then of course, you know, they got to be mothers, right? So, right here, human um, Hebrews making mud bricks this is a temple of um, we marry the visor in Thebes, which is Luxor. Tomb, the date of Thutmosis the third, which is actually the story of Moses and where this story comes from. All right, Thutmosis the third was the Moses story. But as you see here, um, Garath, how we look to Garath, right, and how they looked <laughs> to a giraffe. <laughs> Different size, ain't it? Big difference. <laughs> yeah, big difference. Yeah. Like there's a human on the neck of the giraffe right there. Oh, the monkey. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the little monkey. Mm -hmm. He's happy. Here it is again. This is in Samaria. We look like their children because we are their mm -hmm. children. <laughs> Even the ancient. Um, Indian speaks of when they came here, there was giants. All right. That was us again. All right. 150 million years ago, this is how it looked. Gowana and Barasia. Well, Asia is North America and Asia, which is Asia Minor and Asia. Then you have Gowana, which is actually South America and Africa. And then you have, of course, uh, India, all right, um, Madagascar and Australia um, connected to, um, I think that's the Antarctica. All right, so indigenous Americans was told that we was wiped out, replaced by Mongoloids, and that, we, and that they're really black from recent Africa, all brought to the new world by Europeans on slave ships. We were the first people on all continents. Case closed. Mm -hmm. As we showed that earlier, when you go back here, they had to admit black people inhabited Russia, Asia, England, Italy, Romania, America, et cetera, et cetera. We was everywhere. So these were the indigenous blacks of all those nations. Of all these nations, exactly. And here's the proof of it in the book called Gods and Spacemen in the Ancient West by W. Raymond Drake. He says that the Pygmies, who is here in the center, inhabited Earth for at least 30 million years. He's being quite conservative in the estimate, but let's say we can go back 30 million years shows perfectly that it was us. <laughs> and where was the remains of the pygmies found? 
It wasn't just found in Africa, it's found all over the world. It remains was in Aki, Efe, Muti, um, and Muti, and Buti, um, Central Africa. There was remains in Australia, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, um, Papua New Guinea, Brazil. Hold up, Brazil. Hold up, that's South America. That means there was in the Americas. So it goes on and on and on. They found 25 miniature humans who lived between 1,000 to 3,000 years ago who was found on the island of Palu in Micronesia. So we was all, they was all over the world. Proven. Even in the book, Signs and Symbol of Primordial, Primordial Man, says the pygmies are the original and the oldest living people on the face of the planet Earth. That's what it says. So these blue black men are the oldest people on the planet going back. That means it was here more than 30 million years ago, as we just finished showing. But these were the people that was here. Now, in this book, The Hidden Life of Freemasonry by C.W. Ledbetter, he goes into explaining who the pygmies actually are. He says, and Ledbetter, he's 33 degrees Freemasonry. So this is in Freemasonry, too. He says that pygmy race is the relic of the old Lemurians. So when we speak about the Lemurian people, they were the Lemurian people and represent them more purely than any other people. The Lemurians were at one time a gigantic people. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Lemurians at one time was a gigantic people. That means that they was the giants that we showed earlier who was our mothers and fathers. What happened? Well, with the diminishing of the oxygen in the, in the ozone, what happened was that we began to shrink in size. Because the oxygen content 65 million years ago was 35%. Today is less than 21%. So that means that we have lost more than what? 14% of our oxygen content. Which reduced our life expectancy, which reduced our size as well. And more susceptible to disease. Exactly. So the Lemurians at one time was a gigantic people, but in the process of dying out, they diminished in size. So not only, did, as you just said, the disease crept in, killed them off, they did begin to even begin to diminish even more in size. This is how it happened. The African Bushmen are also remnants of the same race, but were very mixed blood, and the same thing is true of those who are usually called the Abori um, Australian Aboriginals. Except that in their case, there was a very ad like mixture um, of Aryan blood. Yet, was the Aryans sexed them as they invaded Australia. At one time, the pygmies were spread over a great deal more of Africa than at present, and some of them were the first people to enter Egypt. But we know that to be the truth. Right here, the origin and evolution of primordial man by um, Albert Church Ward. He says, not only in Africa, right here, he says, from here, these little men spread it all over the world, north, east, south, and west, until not only in Africa, but in Europe, Asia, North and South America, and Oceania was populated by them. So the same men that W. Raymond Drake just said been on the earth at least 30 million years ago, populated the whole planet in all the areas. So that means that we are a descendancy of them as well, right or wrong. He was the first little red man of the earth. From the pygmy, evolution continued progressively in the following order. Second was the Bushman, uh, first for the Bushman, Second was the Masaba Negro. Third was the um, Nihilic Negro. Fourth was the Maasai. And five was Mongolia, um, Mongoloids. And then the so called Aryanists. It was the last. And he just showed you earlier that they just came to existence 6,000 to 8,000 years ago. That's it. But we know that the pygmies been on the planet at least 30 million years ago. And we showed proof only dating back to 2.8 billion years ago of life being existed on planet Earth. Whether they want to say it was Earth or extraterrestrial, it doesn't matter. We was here. That's what we do know. 
So, the original Aboriginals, or known as the Australians, the original Asians, the original people of Latin descent, which is not with black folks as you see here, original Filipinos, known as the Moros, the original Indians was us, the original people of India was us, people of Uruguay, the people of Thailand, the people of India, the people of Malaysia, the people of America, the people of Suriname, Bali, Australia, and Colombia. We was all over the planet Earth, and this is what this shows. But they tell you that, oh, y'all got to all these places because we brought you there by slave ships. That's bullshit. In the book, 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro, J. Rogers stated that the people of Negro descent living in Asia and Oceania probably exceeded the number of the present Negro population of Africa. The purest Negro types are in Southern Asia. So what we find is a 28 million year old human fossil in the British Museum is now in the basement. But where do they find it at? In the Caribbean island of Guadalupe. A two, 28 billion, a 28 million, excuse me, year old human skeleton. So that means that this is 10 times older than the Degnesh, um, in which they keep talking about that they found in Ethiopia, or actually in what they're now referred to as um, Uganda, Kenya uh, area. That only dates back to 2.8 million years ago. But here you have something that's 10 million, that's 10 times older, 28 million, and it's not in Africa. It was found in Guadalupe in the Caribbean islands. Remember, where was one of the places that the pygmies branched out at? Let's go. Go back and check out right here. Europe, Asia, North and South America, and what? Oceania. What is Oceania? Oceania is the area that we're talking about. The Caribbean. Right. So, so the Caribbean as well as also the Pacific Island, all the islands, the islands in the ocean, Oceania. <laughs> so they were inhabited way, way, way before slavery. Exactly. exactly. They didn't get us from those slaves. This is all lies. In 1887, fallen um, Florentino Amicchio discovered apparently man-made heaps, primitive flint tools, carved bones, and a moderate human spinal bone in Pleistocene strata three to five million years old in Monte Hermosa, Argentina. Where is Argentina? That's South America again. He also made similar finds in uh, Miocene strata in Argentina date back to five to 25 million years old. So here we have a fossil 28 million years old in the Caribbean, Guadalupe. Here we have in Argentina and South America date back to five to 25 million year old fossils. Hmm. All of these are older than the fossils that they keep telling it that comes from out of Africa. <laughs> All of this is older than the fossil that keep telling us that comes out of Africa. They keep showing us monkeys, like Lucy. Lucy is a ape-like creature, right? Some type of ape-like creature. But they even had to say a 1.8 million year old skull indicates that there may have just been one human species on Earth two million years ago. Okay, we know that. And who were they? Well, we just showed you it was the pygmies. <laughs> the big me. So Africa is not our home. Africa is our throne. And from our throne, we ruled our home, which is 196,940, uh, 196,940,000 square miles of the planet Earth. You just want to claim a spot or the whole thing. Oh, if you, Dr. Kali, you're going to claim the whole goddamn thing. That's what we're going to do. Claim it all. All right, so in the book, Return of the Ancient Ones, written by the Empress Vodiasi Tierra of Washington, or Washington Attorney Gaston L. Bay, what's called the Washington Files. She says here that the race and traces of his whereabouts are not easy, yet a color chart of man can be fixed easily. 
man's origin is in Africa. This is where Africa was the whole earth, one landmass, the Washita are original ancient race or nation of people. They are from Africa to the land of not sleep. We are the sleeping giants that must be awakened. We were separated from what you know as Africa. All right. Now, the Empress goes on. So it wasn't just Africa or the Washoa just aren't here in America, but the Washoa was all over the globe, just like our um, four parents, mothers and fathers, the Twap, known as the Anu, known as the Pygmies. Empire Washoa did that the Manya Moors, Empire of the Kushites, Shanghai, Malian Empire, the Ultima Empire, which is the Moroccan Empire, shows very extensively that, um, um, and it's told to us that the Empress um, is the great great granddaughter of Marie Antoinette, six times removed, and the rightful heir to the throne of France, Spain, England by royal blood. She laid claim to the following lands by and through blood line. Um, line. The Bourbon Estate, also known as the Imperial International Estate of the Bourbon Hashburg Empire, which included Western Europe. The Bourbon Estate, also known as the Imperial Inter um, um, International um, Estate. But what do they include? The Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, Sicily, Nepal, Slovenia. Spain and Portugal, as well as most of North America and the Caribbean, in addition to the Central and South America. In all of North America, west of the Imperial Debarkation Line of 1713 or the British Royal Proclamation Line of 1763. This is a breakdown of the Royal Imperial Bloodline of the Washington Tournament Moors, the young heirs to the French throne. King Louis the Seventeenth married the young heiress to the Washington Turnica throne, known as Anna Maria, and they um, basically became um, once they married in seventeen ninety five, persuaded to the conveyance of the Spanish land grants bestowed upon the young heir, King Louis the Seventeenth, and his wife, young heiress Anna Maria. These two were also received the Imperial Spanish Land Grant of 1763. As a recipient of both 1762 and 1795 Spanish Land Grants, King Louis XVII became known as the Marquis de Maison Rouge, all right? Meaning, essentially, um, the Prince of the Louisiana um, Terror, um, known as the Louisiana um, uh, Purchase. But it was never purchased, as we find out. Additional names to the empires of the Moors, um, you will find as Almohad or Al Mohavids, the Atlanteans, the Aztecs, the Carthaginians, the Etruscans, the Hassians, Inca, Iroquois, the Morians, as we were already proving that, the Moabites, the Olmecs, the Ottoman, the Phoenicians, Powhatan, the Prussians the Saracens, the Sumerians, the Turks, the British Empire, the Moorish Empire, the Spanish Empire, the French Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, all that was Moors. So when you read in your history books, understand what you read it, all right? Understand what you read it. Okay, who is? All right, so, yeah, we'll go right here. The Normand insisted, or insist that the human race issued from Upa Maroon. Theopontus, Pompus, teaches us that the people who inhabited Atlantis were the people of Meru, the Moors. The word Meru and Moor is the same word as I'll show you in a second. As the Puritans brought the name Boston, Stringfield, Northampton, York, etc., from Old England to New England. So the ancient e um, eagle, Egyptians, and swans, Canaanites, came to the Asia, coming from Asia from a far distance, carrying thither the American name Egypt Canaan. 
Like, get the book Wonderful Ethiopians of Ancient Kushite Empire, and this is what it says. The Hindu Purana speaks of the Kushites going to India before they went to Egypt, proving Hindu civilization co-evolved with that of the Chaldea and the country of the Nile. These ancient records that the Egyptians were a colony drawn from the Kushite Diwapi, Diwapa, and that the Pali, another colony that made the Phoenicians follow them from the land of Kush. In those primitive days, the central seat of Ethiopia was not the Moro of our day, which is very ancient, but a kingdom that preceded it by many ages. That was called Moru. The Norman spoke, uh, spoke of the first men of the ancient world as the men of Moru. Now, once again, who is the first men of the ancient world? We showed you that was the Pygmies. So the Pygmies, who is known as the Anu people, who is known as the Twa people, was also known as the men of Maru. The Sanskrit writers called Indra, chief god of the Hindu, king of Maru. He was defied, deified and became the chief representative of the supreme being. Thus was the primitive India sediment by colonists from Ethiopia. So the Indians today came from Ethiopia. And we'll show you what we're talking about as far as the American. So all right, you still believe you're black, and is this what they force your ancestors to call themselves to be accepted in their own homeland? Well, we find that um, the books before the jet, before the ebony, all right, it was copper. And they showed us the women, our women, on the cover of copper. Because the definition of American is an Aboriginal or one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the Europeans. The original application of the name. What's the original application of the name? It's Maru. I'll show you that in a second. This is where we combine all this information at. Copper tone. Who's on the head of the copper tone bottle from back in the days is a Native American. Well, we know what happens when copper tone, look at the bottle. The copper tone bottle is the same color as my skin. The first one and the second one. And this is why on the old picture from back in the day, this is something that they were still showing in the early 80s was the little girl, panties being pulled down by the dog, showing that she was tan, but she wasn't tan there. And so the caption said, don't be a pale face. <laughs> See, they stopped that because they became part of uh, what we now refer to as the uh, pedophilia thing. That wasn't as innocent as it is, even though the dog is doing it. So right here, as you see, she getting dark. She getting that tan on, ain't she? Wait, she's darker than this one, who's as a mongoloid. All right. <laughs> Look how dark she is. In the sun compared to this one here. She looked pale and pasty, don't she? Ain't that something? The word more. Dark complected people. American. Couple call it racist. Okay. Europeans are not Americans. Because well, American means copper colored natives. Found by the Europeans. So how can Europeans be American when they the ones who found the Americans who was copper color. Yeah, and you know in Australia, they the ones who were born by the mother of the Australians, mm -hmm. they consider themselves Aboriginal also. Mm -hmm. Right. So here it is. Western's new universal unabridged dictionary. It says what? An Aboriginal, one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the descents of European settlers. So the Europeans is a settler. And he found on the American continent, us who the copper colored natives, and the original name at that time of America was what? Maru. Moors. Moors. You don't believe that the word Maru means more? Let's continue on. You're going to find that out. Let's look at it. But here we go. Look at that. Brown, red, brown, red. They call this, remember, one red cent. Right? Yeah. 
Well, this is all the colors that how women come in. Beauty comes in many colors, yeah, but they're all the colors of <laughs> of the penny. <laughs> So we're talking about Maru. Here it is. Even in the ancient Egyptian teachings, they tell you about the teachings of Ptahotep, the oldest book of the world. This is by A.C.G. Hilliard, the third, who was a Boulay member, and Barack Obama, being a Boulay member, brought his body back over here um, when he died in Egypt. Um, all right. So here we have the word Maru. The symbol of Maru is an owl in the mouth of Ra. M-E-R-U. That's actually supposed to be a U because that is actually Ru, R U, and this is M. And they put the E in there because the E is the letter that is normally put in the center as the continent in the ancient Egyptian language. The empire of the Tartarians symbol was an owl, showing that they were Moors because. The owl is the symbol of the Moors, which is the Maru. We'll keep showing you, same thing. It's on the dollar bill, as a matter of fact. In the mm -hmm. upper right-hand corner of the dollar bill, you'll find an owl peeping out. And the owl, of course, represents truth, insightfulness, um, power, and wisdom. The ability to see through the darkness, and also because an owl can turn its head around in a whole 360-degree circle. Can you see it? Before him. Oh, wow. Real small. Girl. Yeah. You got to look real hard. You mm -hmm. need a, um, a little microscope. Not a microscope, but a yeah, telescope. Microscope. Yeah. One of them. You need one of them. <laughs> so here, this is Webster Dictionary. Right? And Tesaurus. What it says. What is more? And what is in the parentheses oh, of more? Okay. Hold on, is that not the same word that we just seen in ancient Egyptian? Oh, let's go back. Same word, right? Yep. Same exact word. Here we find the word maru. Mm -hmm. For America, here we find the word Maru or Mur, which means the guardian of, which is the meaning of the word Maru in ancient Egypt. And here we find it in Webster Dictionary, in which that the word Mur is the word more. Same word. Matter of fact, they give you the adjective Moorish. Coincidence? I don't think so. So what, it happens that the overseer, governor in chief, et cetera, seems to be the common usage of the title mirror. This term is prefixed to others in order to identify the status in the head of a particular industry or post. If you take the notice, mirror refers to the post such as captain, governor, administrator. Mostly when referring to governing love um, live people. However, when government property, this translates use of overseer, keeper, and steward. Perhaps this is why the esteemed George G. Jackson, um, excuse me, John G. James, um, George G. James referred to the Moors as custodians of comedic culture. In the 8th century AD, the Moors, native of Mauritania in North America, in North Africa invaded Spain and took with them the Egyptian culture, which they had preserved. Knowledge in those days was centralized. So you get myrrh to more came in until now in the book by Cosmo L. Right? So we know where the word more comes from. And in the destruction of black civilization by Chancellor Williams, Dr. Chancellor Williams, he says now again, just like who are the Moors? The answer is very easy. The original Moors, like the Egyptians, were black Africans. Matter of fact, the Egyptians, uh, um, the Moors were the priesthood of the Egyptians. And the amalgamation became more and more widespread. Only Berbers, Arabs, and colors in the Moroccan territories was called Moors because the darkest and the black 
skinned Africans were called black Amores. Eventually, black was dropped. Uh, in this case, the Amor was dropped, and we only began to start using the word black instead of black Amor. Amor. In North Africa and Morocco in particular, all Muslim Arabs, mixed breeds, and Berbers were readily regarded as Moors. The African blacks haven't had even this name taken from them, must contend for recognition as Moors. So that's why we do our nationality, because we are contending for recognition as Moors. So in our nationality, we are Washita Moors. We are Moors, right? Blackamoor. Who is a Blackamoor? An Ethiopian, Negro. Origin, Black Moor. Right? See more. So they tell you that we are the more. So right here, if the Moors aren't recognized, then how come you go to the CDC website, you see at the number 667, the word more. If the Moors aren't recognized, then how come in the rate on the federal um, race ca classification code and uh, 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 Massachusetts Bay Corps, why do you see the word more? 1237-7, more. So the word more, and then the crazy part is, is that the word more is listed as Indian. Look at the category. This is some other races. Look who is above more, right? More. You got Melungeon, Mix, you got um, Mulatto, you got Biracial, Creole, Turk, Half Breed, so forth. But more is in the center of all of that. Right here, you got the Eastern tribes, which is of um, the indigenous people. Right above, you got the um, Lenny Lenape, you got the Eastern Delaware Moors, you got the Oklahoma Delaware, you got all of these various Moors. Here you got um, the um, the Nip Monk, you got the um, Natchee, you got all these various Indian tribes, the um, Tunica Biloxi, which we related also to the Tunica Biloxi. Um, here, but in the center of all these Indian tribes, you got the word Moor. So if we're not recognized, then what the hell more doing on all these goddamn forms that we should be using? We should be using the code 667, 1237-7, and utilizing that information to verify the fact that we all more and y'all do recognize us. This bullshit that they don't recognize the Moors. Well, we don't recognize you as a, as a nation. It don't matter, shit, it's on your goddamn paperwork. The CDC website, this is what this shit said right here. Code, right here. What was it? Code 667. 667 yeah. Right there. 667. Not 666. We got one above that. <laughs> All right. 1237 7. This is how they play us. <laughs> Searching for a nationality. Search for a nationality. And once we find our nationality, which we did, and serve <laughs> that nationality, we're more. We'll do for ourselves what needs to be done. All ethnic groups in this country understand they got a nationality. Right. Because you answer to such stupid words like Negro and Cubs and Black. You have no nationality. Of course, Negro, black, and colored ain't a nationality. Some lady Portuguese or Spanish or Canadian made a noun out of it. Color is not a nationality. Black tells you how you look, but it don't tell you who you are. Hmm. The name of a people must relate them instantaneously. The land, history, and culture. And anytime you call a people by their right name, anytime you call a people by their right name, 
people and the name of people and fail to relate them back to land, history, and culture, you have called them out of their name. There's no slack land or black hole of it. It's nothing wrong with the word black. Nothing wrong with it at all. Only it doesn't relate to a country. The name of every people in the world relate to country. And once you think instantaneously of man, you think of nationality. You belong to some being in the world. Right. So. What was that called, please? That's awesome. That was that that was um from um, Dr. Um John Henry Clark. So that explains the reason why you need a nationality. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so let's look right quick at the word. Land. Let's look at the word land and we get to it right quick. I'm gonna go back up, so just bear with me. I'm gonna run through a lot of this information because I got so much. Is gonna be the day, day. But let's look at land because remember he just said. That your nationality must instantaneously tie you back to land, history, and culture. And you know that Negro, Black, and colored is not a nationality. So is the word more a nationality that you've just been looking at? Well, let's see. Land. Let's look at oh, you find here somewhere. I know you is. <laughs> All right, you go to the Blast Law Dictionary, fourth edition deluxe, and look up land. You will see something very interesting in the definition. Inside of that definition, Hold on, let's see here. Inside that definition, you'll find something remarkable that you know that it had to have been concealed purposely. You'll find the word more is embedded inside the definition of land. Now, that is no coincidence because they're telling you that you are the land. This is why everything is predicated upon the birth certificate. You particularly. If everything wasn't about you, then you know, why all of a sudden they so interested, so interested in your health. Like for example, with this vaccine, mm -hmm. um, they want all the Negroes to come mm -hmm. and bring you their your arms, but they can inoculate you. 
Do we know that more than 70% of our people are not taking it? it really, 70% 70, 70 currently? Yes. Oh, that's, that's larger than I thought. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Or not taking it. And have not taken it. And don't got no plans on taking mm -hmm. it. And that's the reason why they're pushing all these incentives. Mm -hmm. I noticed. Five hundred dollars now. Um, enrolling you into a lottery for a million dollars. To the loans. <laughs> right. Um, what else they're doing? They're doing all types of things. Desperate. We just they are desperate, exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe even when I say you so um desperate. And so concerned about our health, then we need free health care. Right. Worried about our health. Oh, we need to keep y'all healthy. We do. I don't know what else is up there. Right, um, I'm gonna have to go out of this and, and find it because this is not. Is it Moreland? Moreland? No, nah. even though there is a more, there was a Moreland. I got to find it, y'all. So just bear with me, because oh, yeah. this 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 is very important in connection mm -hmm. to what we're talking about. But for some reason, um, I'm having a hard time here getting to it. Got so much vague on information. Can you do but, a um, search? Um, control find. Yeah, I just did that, but um, what I'm gonna oh, do, because a lot of it is um, like it's not typed, so then it'd be hard to find unless you actually type. Right. Something. But I don't know what to do. I got it. Let's see. Go further back. Let's see. Let's see. Let's All right, right there. Land, in the most general sense, comprehends any ground, soil, or earth whatsoever as meadows, pastures, woods, and what? Moors. So remember, we just seen, we just seen Dr. John Henry Clark say that your nationality must instantaneously tie you back to land, history, and culture. The word Moors is embedded inside the definition of land. I don't think you could be more in, um, con uh, uh, containous than that. What is it? Don't come on, containous. Oh, <laughs> instantaneous than that. 
Or they could be more instantaneous than that, can you? When you got the word more is inside the definition of land. Showing and proving that we are the land whenever we say that we are more. So whenever we see in the destruction of black civilization by Chester Williams, and he said that the African blacks haven't had even this name taken from them, must contend for recognition as Moors. Now we see the reason why. Now we see the reason why. Once again. We are a nation, within a nation in this country, searching for a nationality. And once we find our nationality and serve that nationality, we'll do for ourselves what needs to be done. All ethnic groups in this country understand that they are a nationality. Because you answer to such stupid words like Negro and color and black. You have no nationality. Negro is not a nationality. Some lady Portuguese or Spanish, you can add it, you made a noun out of it. Color is not a nationality. Black tells you how you look, but it don't tell you who you are. The name of a people must relate them instantaneously. The land, history, and culture. There it is. Wow, we on the church in the history. So Jesus. show me again. They go to word more is embedded inside the definition of land that Dr. John Henry Clark just spoke about. What is it saying? So that means that you can substitute the word wars for land and land for more. Hey, hey. So this is why Nova Drali said, children, you are at home. And the European is 3,000 miles away from home. And he's going to have to take some water. When the European goes back to Europe, the climate will go back to what it used to be, which is 76 degrees year round. The climate will go back to what it used to be. Before the Europeans came here, the bananas was large and the grapes were four in hand. So, Dr. Ben, he said, now understand, Dr. Ben, he received a doctoral degree in cultural anthropology and Moorish history. Not Egyptian history, but Moorish history from the University of Havana in Cuba and the University of Barcelona in Spain. In his book, Cultural Genocides in the Black and African Studies Curriculum, mentions Moors first as a few of the words we was called with honor by the ancient by the ancient Asians and Europeans. Thousands of years before the Western Europeans knew that America existed. Like the Ben stated, the term Moors were used thousands of years before. Thousands of years before. And here it is. Moors, Carthaginians, the Tumerians, Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the um, um, the Pawnees, the um, Luridian, the Moriates, the Tarnessians, which are the Nubians, the Ortegians, the Amun, the Amunians, the Mo, the Moosians, the Hasperians, and Africans are only a few of the names we was called with honor by the ancient Asians and Europeans thousands of years before the Western Europeans knew that the America even existed. Before, so this is why. When we get to these various names that we said earlier, this all applies to us. All right, so. 
Come on down. So this is why we keep bickering and fighting over the name. Well, it's right here in the miseducation of the Negro, the reason why we keep doing that. <laughs> Dr. Carter G. Wilson, second graduate, so-called second Negro graduate of Harvard University, right behind the first Negro graduate of Harvard in, um, um, Harvard University, which was, anybody know who that was? Yes, I do. That would be the boys. Uh -huh, I was going to say, I'm just worried on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> The boys. Yeah, you don't know who that was. All right, so he said much do about a name. A participant recently attended a historical meeting and decided to take up the question as to what the racial call he called African, Negroes, colored people. Now hold up. Now these are the names that Dr. Dr. John Henry Clark just been saying it wasn't a nationality. But these are the same names that people don't mind being called. This is a matter much concerning to him because he hoped thereby to solve the race problem. The word Negro or Black is used in reference to the particular element because most people of Native African descent approach that color. The term does not imply that every Negro is Black. And the word white does not mean that every white person is actually white. Negroes may be colored, but many Caucasians are scientifically classified as colored. We are not all Africans. Moreover, because many of us were not born in Africa. And we are not all Afro-Americans because few of us are natives of Africa transplanted to America. Hold up. Hold up, hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought you all came on slave ships. I thought they brought all of us over on slave ships. How is that possible that Dr. Carter G. Wilson just said that we're all not Afro-Americans because few of us are natives of Africa transplanted to America. But if we were all was born from Africa, then we should all be Afro-American, shall we? But obviously, he knew something. Then, because this is talking about the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. You know that he used to be a writer for the Negro world under Marcus Garvey? Right. <laughs> yes. He wrote for the Negro world with Marcus Garvey. Hmm. So he just gave you a clue that you were not just Africans brought over here 400 years ago. He said, specifically, few of us are natives to Africa. A few. So this goes back to the Empress. The Empress says that about maybe 15% of us came from Africa 400 years ago, that 85% of us was already here. Our bloodline, 85% 85, 85 of our bloodline was already here 400 years ago. 15% came from Africa. So that is the very few of us that came from yeah. being natives yeah. of Africa, transplanted to America. So he's saying even then that most of us did not come on slave ships from the Europeans 400 years ago, and we was not slaves. He just said it. Yeah, you they see? put us on a boat. But that's what, right, <laughs> right, right. But that's and the miseducation of the Negro. Right, the same way. He's on a, they, they put us on a boat, but had us out in sea and brought us back to where we came from somewhere else. Right. Exactly. Even in this article, Return of Negro People, the Dark Continent is impossible owing to the material possessions or progress made by them, it is announced. Disenfranchise the Negro and send it back to Africa? Absurd. Impossible. And they write about that. More than a billion dollars worth of United States real estate, which he owes, owns in his own name in the United States, is not easy to be taken from him. Besides, the Negro is not an African. <laughs> this was in a newspaper article. He is an American. African is a misnomer. Why try to send him to a country which is not his own? Okay. Susar Economics, the history of Pan-African trade, commerce, money, and wealth. These blacks found in the Americas, the mound builders, 
They were dark-skinned, woolly-haired blacks who were indigenous, native to North America and kin to the Omex of South America. The Omex and the Washita, Black Californians, Yamasi, um, the Kalifanamis, and the other pre-Columbian blacks of the Americas was part of a network, prehistoric trade network that began in Africa and spread worldwide over 100,000 years ago and at various periods afterwards. So we was trading amongst ourselves without the Europeans even being on the planet over 100,000 years ago. We had our own boats. <laughs> we had our own ships that we was going back and forth on. He made us think that he made ships 400 million, 400,000, 400 years ago and just went around picking us all up. <laughs> yeah, and it saved makes us. sense when you really think about it. Exactly, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense. It doesn't make sense. And here is a line to prove it. Let's see what Jesus said. Come on, Jesus. Started to find That's my father in order from Mexico. Of all the civilizations, he was, he was here. He, he was here on, on his trip when America. we had it. Is the old theory that says that over a very straight came groups of people under as major But when they got to the Gulf of Mexico, they find a group of people called Omex. And La Venta. La Venta in San Lorenzo with big colossal heads of Asco. The features were not were not European Asian as they thought. But there were a combined combined features. Slanted eyes, high big chin bones with wide noses. Lips, foreheads, and curly hair, very close to the skull. And they said, "What happened here?" Right? There's an old, old speculation that says that the Europeans weren't the first to come to America. We have evidence of Chinese being in Mexico many years before they, they came, and then we have we think we strongly speculate that the Black Egyptians, called Nubians, Nubians. The great yes. sailors, yes. The great yes. Yes. Say, uh, yes. warriors, could have had, you know, could have had, you know, the ability to do an opposite thing. Instead of from this side of Africa over, they went from the other, went around, found the current, came over, and many of them came and decided to stay. That's, right. That's why we see the mixture of immigrating groups from up north. Mixing with the Nubians, Nubians, and the result is the one oh, nice. oh, that's right. That's right. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool. See, will the natives be selling like they were selling hats? All right, here we go again. We had to get them twice, saying. And this was when in front of all the people on the bus. Right here is the visit where something occurred. Slanted eyes, high thick chin bones, wide foreheads, but wide noses, wide lips, and curly hair close to the skull, like our friends, Afro friends from Africa. What happened here? What happened? How did these people become this way? What occurred in the history of the sentiment of this new world that today we still speculate and every day? more evidence is being found. But this is simply what happens in areas. When I went to school, because I went to the university to do this in areas, I went to the Autonomous University of Yucatan, and I majored in anthropological sciences and history. I know about you. Plymouth Rock, Mayflower, the Pilgrim. Uh -oh. I give days, not just three Turkey. Tell them. And the 13 colonies, New York should be called the Amsterdam. Wow. I majored in that. As a matter of fact, my thesis was on American history. Sorry. I know about uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Stone, the first president of the United States of America, my Alexander Hamilton, they called the Delaware with Mr. George Washington to sneak up on the British while they were sleeping, remember? Okay. And let me mention to you something, Zenyuris. Today, history is being dug out of the ground in all the American continent, proving that long before the Europeans came to America, other people were coming to this world. Yes. 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 We have evidence that Chinese were already teaching these indigenous groups of how to make things sparkle from sulfur. We have sulfur mines in Central Mexico. 
managed properly, said that the winner got to a city in Mexico City called Cholula, city of Mexico, central Mexico, that they were amazed that these people greeted them with fireworks, the sparkles of sulfur. Sulfur. And if the Chinese were here, why not think the following? When I went to school, there's a strong, strong speculation about the origin of the Olmecas that says that the Olmecas were black Egyptians coming over to Africa. The Nubians. the Nubians have found their way on the opposite side. We all know that everybody thinks that came from Africa. So that they came opposite around, got to a current of water that washed them into a new world. And as they came, they started to maybe at the beginning commercialize. That's why in Egypt, tobacco was found among the mummies. How did tobacco get to Egypt? But it's only up. America, Nubian virgins coming, encountering, finding a new world that they were not interested in conquering, just coming and taking back things unknown to them. Maybe some of them stayed and got mixed with the truth that was coming from the very same. This mixture resulted in COVID civilization. The ones that truly say there is all the vast knowledge that we know about these civilizations. I must, I must share with you that in archaeology in Mexico, it is they, the ones that began the skill and knowledge that we know of the morality, yes. astronomy, yes. with yes. languages, yes. organization. Yes. It is from them, yes. passed it on to other than cultures. Oh, Absolutely. So we could say that if we could call the grand, great, great, great grandfathers of all the cultures of Mexico, we would have to say the Ortegas. And go see in a place called Tabeta in San Lorenzo the colossal heads of the Olympics. It's so wow. right, you say, Wow, that's how can this be? How can this Before be? Before the Mayflower. Right. Before the Mayflower. Thousands and thousands of years before the Mayflower. So he asked the question, How could this be? Well, Let's go back. Let's let's see how can this be. <laughs> Remember, we just showed you that there was trade amongst us. I think it's wrong. Right there, but this is where something occurred. Slanted eyes, high thick chin bones, right forehead, but white noses, white lips, and curly hair, close to the skull, like our friend. Started to you heard him say, like our friends, the Afro-Americans, and that's when we went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Like we say in the book, Suzar Economics, it specifically states that we was already doing trade, import and export over one hundred thousand years ago. There was no other race on the planet one hundred thousand years ago. Remember, the Europeans just came six thousand, between six thousand to eight thousand years ago. You're talking about one hundred thousand years ago. He wasn't here. <laughs> so this means that we were doing trade with our brothers and sisters. We had the Afro-Americans, as they refer as we refer to ourselves as the African Americans now. And we had our African brothers and sisters, and we were doing trade with each other even then. Mm -hmm. And this is what this is showing. Look at that. The Omex, the Washita, the Black Californians, the Yamasi, the Kalifanamis, and the other pre-Columbian blacks. Pre-Columbian, that means before Columbus. Blacks that was already here in the Americas was part of a prehistoric trade network that began in Africa and spread it worldwide 100,000 years ago. Over 100,000 years ago, worldwide. All right, so we know that we was already here, there's no doubt about it. And here's more proof of that right here. Leaving South America, Dr. Albert Goodyear, a South Carolina University professor. So if you don't want to believe me, just take a trip one state down, South Carolina University. They have a Yamasee train stop. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say I ain't know what. I, what yeah, I yeah. Well, your family, part of your From family, right there in Beaufort, South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. So you talk about the Yamasi, um, the um, town of the Yamasi is right there, which is right between um, Hardyville and um, and Beaufort. 
Yamasee is right in between there. Wow. So right here it says, Dr. Albert Goodyear, South Carolina University professor say, human lived along the east bank of the Savannah River. Now the Savannah River is right on the other side of Hardyville, which is right below Beaufort. 50,000 years ago, and 51,700 years ago, North American site found in Allendale County, South Carolina, by the Savannah River is less than 30 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. But evidence for the ancient African migration. Hold on, now this is 51,000, now this is 50,000, over 50,000 years ago. We just did 100,000 years ago, we was doing trading yeah. with each other. Here it is, 50,000 years ago, we was already here. Mm. He says it, he says from ancient African migrations came in multiple forms. Skulls and skeletons, footprints and lava, campsites, genetic M174, and the haploid groups, linguistics, painting, carving, architecture, and Egyptian writing? Hold up. I thought the Egyptians was in Egypt, in right. Africa. What is Egyptian writing doing in South Carolina? Right. Wow. And then it was 50,000 years ago, which would have been 45,000 years before the making of the Pyramids, because they say the pyramids is only 4,000 years old. Mm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody is lying. <laughs> <laughs> only way they could be Egyptian writers was if the Egyptians was here. Who did Jesus just say the Omex were? Hold on. Let's go back again. Nubian. <laughs> he said they was the Nubian Egyptians. Let's hear him say it one more time. Started to find cities of stone in order from Mexico. All of, Mexico. of all the civilizations that they related of the origin of Mexico, all up into Florida, Florida Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. Right. But when they got to the Gulf of Mexico, they find a group of people called Omex. And La Venta. La Venta in San Lorenzo was a bit close to Tabasco. The features were not were not European Asian as they thought, but there were a combined combined features: slanted eyes, high thick chin bones with wide noses, lips, foreheads, and curly hair very close to the skull. And they said, "What happened here?" Right? There's an old old speculation that says that the Europeans weren't the first to come to America. Right. We have evidence of Chinese being in Mexico many yes. years before they, they yes. came. And then we have, we think, we strongly speculate that the black Egyptians, called the Nubian, Nubian. 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 great yes. sailors, yes. great. Yes. There you go. We just said it. So we know where the Egyptian writing came from. Our Mayan friend just told us. <laughs> It was the Omex. The Omex had Egyptian writing. Mm. And they're the oldest civilization in the Western Hemisphere. They date back more than 5,000 years ago. Now we have a professor at South Carolina University. He says they even date, he said they basically was being very conservative with the estimate. It wasn't 5,000 years ago, it was really 50 thousand years ago that we was already here and as we seen earlier we already had a trade network over 100,000 years ago and as we seen even before that two million years how many 28 million years we keep going back 600 million years 2.8 million years we was already here on planet earth 600 million years that blast that was carried out that I showed you earlier that was in Dorchester, Massachusetts. That was in Dorchester, Massachusetts. That was here. <laughs> and they found that vase or that vessel. That was here. So we know where the Egyptian writing came from. It came from the Omex, the artifacts and, and, and um, structure. The data exposed the false premise that the first Americans came from Asia once and for all. So they can't say that they came from Asia or that the first Americans was Asians, which is the Mongoloids or the um, so-called Indians that they keep showing us um, on the pictures today. It was us, we were the first that was here. 
you won't call someone an Indian. The word Indian comes from the word black anyway. The word Indian means black people. <laughs> That's what the word Indian mean. Because the word Indy means black. Mm -hmm. Look it up in the Webster Dictionary. Indy, I-N-D-I means black. And the I-A-N or A-N portion means people. So the word Indian means black people. <laughs> we tripping. <laughs> so that was us. Here it is. Mexico gave a replica of the Olmec head to the Ethiopians. As you see here, <laughs> Olmec head. Mexico mm -hmm. gave that to the Ethiopians to verify the fact that they were the Nubian Egyptians mm. who came. That's why Ethiopia has their head to this very day, given to them by Mexico. So you know this is how they were. Damn, they was here too. <laughs> Hiding. <laughs> Don't teach the history. <laughs> look, look how big their head is compared to them. Damn, they was here too. Mm. Oh, cover it back up. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm trying to cover it back up. <laughs> so we found that at least almost 20 heads have been found. And they all date back to 3,700 plus years old. 37, so almost 4,000 year old. The same time that they were saying that the pyramids was being built was the same time that we was already in America. <laughs> they don't want you to know that, but they want you to believe that we didn't have ships, but here we are. We have drawings of ships, painters of ships. Models of ships. And we didn't sell. This is all in the Cairo Museum, in various museums, in the Louvre Museum, in the Metropolitan Museum, in New York, Natural um, um, History and Life Museum in New York, History um, Museums. Uh oh, they go in replica. A replica. And then they even tell you that there was 18 temples in the Grand Canyon. Egyptian temples, temples, that is. So we got proof that the Egyptians was here 50,000 years ago. We got proof that they had Egyptian writing 50,000 years ago, which is hieroglyphics or metro nature. Then we find that thousands of years ago in the Grand Canyon, they got 18 temples. <laughs> and the temple is called the Isis Temple. One of the 18 temples is called the Isis Temple. Where is it at? In the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It's called the Isis Temple. We got proof that the ancient Egyptians artifacts found in Mexico confirms as authentic. A mysterious statuette discovered in Mexico had recently been confirmed as authentic. The mysterious statuette dating back to the 19th dynastic period basically has ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics carving covering its surface. Researchers confirmed that the item discovered in Mexico is in fact an ancient um, Ushepit, or Ushepiti, um figurine. There it is. What is that doing in Mexico? What is the ancient Egyptians doing in Mexico? Oh, I can tell you. The Mayans, the, um, the Olmec Mayan people brought it there. In particular, the Olmecs brought it there. Why did we find the Unk symbol in Mexico? Mm. In Aztec archaeology. What is that doing there? I thought that the Unk symbol was only the angel. What's it doing at the pyramid sites? Of the as on um, the Aztec pyramid sites. Mm. What is this Memphis? What is this discovery of the Sphinx in Memphis in 1912? You know where Memphis is, don't you? That's Tennessee. That's one state over from North Carolina, <laughs> across the mountains. And they found a Sphinx. In 1912, they won't show you this picture. Yeah. 
Here is the articles, the Arizona Gazette, March 12, 1909. Um, also, the Phoenix Gazette of April 1909. And this is a cover up. It said, archaeological cover up by David Hatcher Childress. He states, perhaps the most amazing suppression of all the excavations of the Egyptian tomb, tomb by the Smithsonian itself in Arizona. A lengthy front page story of the Phoenix Gazette in April the 5th, 1905, gave a highly detailed report of the discovery and excavation of a rock cut vault by an expedition led by Professor S.A. Jordan of the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian, however, claims to absolutely have no knowledge of the discovery and the discoveries. We don't know nothing about S.A. Jordan. We don't know who he is. We know nothing about that. <laughs> but yet, there's two articles being published, Arizona Gazette and the Phoenix Gazette in 1909, more than 100 years ago. Well, okay. This is what was inside of the Grand Canyon. Another Sphinx. So we find the Sphinx in Memphis, Tennessee. We find the Sphinx or, or Ankh symbols in Aztec, Mexico. We find it in the Grand Canyon, Sphinx or Hermarket. And he, these are the gold artifacts from the Kincaid Tunnel in Ohio, y'all. On display in the Smithsonian Institute. I thought they didn't know nothing about none of this stuff at the Washington DC from the Grand Canyon. I thought they didn't know nothing about that. We don't know nothing about the expeditions in which that took place. We don't know nothing about that. I don't know how, have they said long how old the Sphinx, the Sphinx was? Because I heard it's last over, time, the last age I heard it's it was 800,000. It's over 80, yeah, it's over 90,000 years old. Yeah. yeah, that was during the time of when we were doing import and export and we made that Sphinx. It represents the constellation Sirius. The dog star. So actually, the bottom of the body actually is the dog, and not a line in which that is um, being made the same. In which that is um, correlating with the um, um, the Rigaville, uh constellation, which is the lion. But here we have the best symbol from out of Egypt being displayed right in South America. Same symbol. This is Peru, and this is Kemet. Same symbol. Wow. We know that this is real. This is a full-size indigenous warrior statue at the Pre-Columbian Gold Museum in San Jose, Costa Rica. This is a Pre-Columbian artifact at the National Anthropological Museum in Panama City. Panama. Same thing that we see, Ghostface Killer and Slick Rick wearing the, wearing the gold. We was already doing that. <laughs> That's Egyptian. The Egyptians, exact same thing. Where they got it from? Because remember, these are the Nubian Egyptians. It was in South America. It was in Central North America, the adjoining islands. They was all over. In 1505, Vesco Nunes, the um, Balboa, not, not Rocky Balboa, <laughs> <laughs> the Spanish conquistadors encountered the first Negroes on the American continent, laced in gold. In Panama and Central America, shortly before warring with them and later enslaving them in their own land, during pre-colonial times, indigenous Negroes in Panama had abundant gold artifacts and several gold mines exploited. Panama today holds over 200 billion in dollars in material or mineral resources. We went to Chesanisa, and I can tell you, we got this man who was just like the Sphinx that correlates to the Chesanisa pyramid, just like the Sphinx correlates to Khufu pyramid right there. And this is right in Mexico. And if you didn't notice, the Mayan, Jesus, said we didn't build the pyramids. He was talking about the Omex built the pyramids. They the ones who built the pyramids. 
He said, remember, he said architecture, mathematics, <laughs> all these sciences came from them. And they gladly gave it to everybody else. So we civilized the world. This is what he was saying. Go back to what he said. So here it is, the Dogon village in Mali, and here's the Pablo um, village in, in um, of the Native Americans in Arizona um, area. These are the African thatch houses in Kenya, all right, and Native American teepee, where they got it from. All correlated, the African Dogon um, Badu dance, where Erica Badu got her name from. Um, uh, she got it from the Badu um, dance. Um, the Apace Indian dance. You got the African Zulu chief and the Aztec Indian chief where they got the elaboration of the head dress and piece from. You got the Cuba mass of Central Africa and the Native American Hamasa um, mass. You got the Mandingo dance and the um, Aztec Indian dance. We got the African use of feathers and of course the Indian use of feathers. They weren't the only ones that used the feathers. You got the Egyptian crooks um, stick and the Native American coop stick. Same thing. So we understand that we influence the world. Remember, this came through the import and export. All right? And through the import and export. All right, these are also what else they found in the um, in Illinois. In 1982, Russell Burrow from the southern Illinois town of um, Oni discovered a mysterious cave along the branch of Little um, Wabash River. The startling content of the cave was set long held standard of American archaeology on his ear and provide evidence that Egyptians, visitors from the old world, may have reached the center of the North American continent long before we generally believed. All right, so right here, showing you. Now, they say in Egyptians, but who they look like? <laughs> so that means that they would have to verify the fact that we were the Egyptians, right or wrong. So, these are ancient Negroes, Moorish, indigenous stone artifacts from Burrow Cave, Illinois. Ancient Egyptians artifact from the same cave. All right, this is this, this is my father-in-law right here. That's him right there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me right there. There go Jamie, Jameson. That's me all the way back. Nice. Yeah, that's me all the way back there with the same kufi on. <laughs> so back in March 22. 2013, my wife and I and 17 other persons went to Cancun via Talon Olmec Pyramids in Mexico. And this is Jesus, who you've seen talking earlier to verify the information on which that I'm teaching on. All right. This is us on the cruise ship. This is Brother Azariah. If y'all know who that is, Brother Azariah, make sure you look him up. All right, this is conversation between How me and How do you spell him. it? Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I'm spelling it right. Azariah. Mm -hmm. um, A-Z-Z-A-R-I-A-H. A-Z-Z, -Z, okay. Mm -hmm. Azariah wrote this. Yes, it was a fantastic trip, and you did an amazing job. Amazing how the Mexicans knew more than many of the Moors in the United States, and how they immediately recognized us as Moors. Mm -hmm. wow. And then I wrote back, I said, wow and stated that we were Morenos, and our, his, and our heritage is Egyptian Nubians, Kushites. And we built the pyramids, and the oldest civilization recorded in modern times is the Shi people, i.e. the Olmecans, confessing that it was all us, laugh, LOL. And he was mine, right? And who was I talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus broke it down. Y'all seen him break it down. That's why I put the clips up there. 
because it won't accept it. Mayans and other indigenous people, uh, uh, I should say Native American, Indians, whatever they want to refer to themselves as, that's lighter skin, won't accept us as darker skin believing and saying it. So that's why I put Jesus up here. I, I, we got Jesus on you. Right. Jesus. We got Jesus on you. You can't bypass Jesus. Our Jesus told the truth. I mean, we got to be careful with that because they have the Native Americans and indigenous people that we used to hearing. Right, the scene. They have us fighting one another. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But this is not the fight. This is just to verify the fact yeah. that either Mayans are telling are. you the truth mm -hmm. of who we actually are. Yes. Because they want us to come back to the knowledge of self. That's the important part of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not, not, not to debate, because there is no debating, because I've done show you over 100,000 years facts of history and facts. facts. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. coming from their own professors, you know, and scholars and so forth and so on. Right, then they see the truth and they'll, they'll know that who, you know what I mean, who's who. Right, right. That's all this is for. Verification. All right. Um, historical and heritage purposes for our people specifically. All right. Because we're the ones who have been lied to historically of who we are. This is the very temple that actually... Um, we have four people. We have one here, one there, one there, one there, and the rest of our people went inside the temple and did a ritual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As the riot took our people inside and did a ritual. You was there, right? Did, did you? Would you stay or did you go in? I remember that's right. right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally deleted my, my oh, pictures. You, you, but they said you're able to retrieve it, but I don't right. know how to retrieve it. Oh, okay, okay. You know, yeah. deleted all Cause, cause I thought that I thought that we deleted the um, information too, but this computer here kept it, and we didn't even have this computer. This computer is able to to capture um, pictures from from other computers, wow. documentation and stuff from other computers. This is what these Macs do. So we found Jesus. These pictures, um, these um, videos that we thought was gone. They was on this computer, and we didn't even have this computer. Wow. So it had the space to to kick, to hold all that. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love Max because if you lose something, you put your computer near it. You take your computer and put it near it. It's going to collect oh, wow. the information okay. from it. Wow. Yeah. 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 I love that. At least that part, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love that part that I was able to be able to get that the. The footage of Hazu because I thought it was going. You got it on storage. No, I don't need it. I don't need it on storage now. I got I put it on YouTube. Unlisted though. So people in Patreon can go and see what Hazu is saying. You know, that's the key now. That's how you do it now. So right here, the first Americans were Africans. Documented evidence. This is Dr. David M. Hotep, PhD. He has a revised edition of the book now. But he verifies what we're talking about. Now, well, remember, he's PhD, so he's dealing with academia. If you have a PhD and you work at university, you deal with academia, so therefore, this, but so far, you can go back. I don't have to do that. All right? I'm not confined to um, the academic school system, belief system of what has to be taught. All right? That's why I can go back millions and billions of years with this information. As compared to just, he can go back probably no more than 50,000 years. He won't go no further back than the 50,000 years that I showed you that Albert Goodyear documented. Okay? Why are they so restricted? Why are, right. they, why are they so restricted? Because they don't want you to know who you really are and how long you've been on planet Earth. So therefore, they have to confine the so-called black professors to a specific timeline. Even though it seemed like it, that's an extraordinary time, 50,000 years is an extraordinary time, that's nothing compared to what I just showed you for the last hour and 15, 20 minutes. What I just showed you over for the last hour and 15, 20 minutes, six, um, 2.8 billion year history all the way down to 50,000 years, they can't do that. Yeah. He had to start at 50,000 years. And to people who read the book, that's fantastic. Oh, did you ever read the first um, uh, Americans were Africans? I said, yeah, I got the book, but it's still weak compared to the information that we just dropped coming from 2.8 billion years from Africa, 600 million years in America, on down to 
50,000 years showing the Omex civilization and then the Mayan confirming what we just said. Mm. <laughs> That's nothing. So I love the book, but Africans have been the original, Africans may have been the original Americans. Really? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad they say that because if not, then where, then, we have, then where would we have gotten all these hairs from? Wow. Look at these noses and these lips. Undeniable, huh? Right, undeniable. <laughs> all right, the African who came to the America before Columbus, and who thrust himself in the Omec world, did not come as slaves, but as masters of his own destiny, and made him enormous. Enormous contribution to civilization and humanity that is still being measured. And these are the words of the renowned scholar Renoka Rashid, who just passed, Alayhi Salam, upon him. But even he had a problem with some of the information, which is being said today by some of these so called scholars on YouTube. Um, but me, this is why I use so much facts and books and scholarship. Is to verify, go and verify this yourself. You don't believe me, check it out. So, the black gods of ancient America, this is in what they never told you in history class. He says, another of the five um, gigantic heads of the Omec deities weighs about five tons. Um, from full size replication in the American Museum of Natural History in New York. That's where it's at. A fake statement was made by Professor Wiener of Harvard University. See, we always go back to Harvard. African and the Discovery of America, Volume 3, Philadelphia, 1920-1922. He shows how the culture of America so closely resembled African culture that one must conclude that African origin of America. Wow. The identity of the spiritual civilization down to the remotest detail in the Sudan and in Mexico and elsewhere. Now, who, who, where do the Nubian Egyptians come from? They come from Sudan. So in the Sudan and Mexico and elsewhere in America leads to the assumption that the other cultural elements identical in both continents and frequently um, bearing the same names of African origin are a um, Jurassic, African, oh, excuse me, ancient Egyptians and Chinese in America. This is what um, Jesus was talking about pointed out that the blacks began his career in America, not as slave, but his master. He was the master of this. The first Americans were black. The scholarly Latin author C.C. McQuise explains that this is a Latin, this is a Mexican, an historian of Mexico. And he explains and say that the strong possibility that black people were the first people in the Americas, out of which later came the red American race. So the people that you see now who are known as the Mongoloids or the Mongolians, um, who we now refer to as the Indians, they came later and he says it. Professor Alexander von Wooten note in his book, Unexpected Fixes in Ancient America, adds how black Americans or black people was present in America in most ancient and pre-classical times. The startling fact is that all parts of Mexico, archaeological pieces representing Negro and Negro people has been found, especially in archaic or pre-classic sites. The presence of Negroes with their trading masters in America before Columbus, say Professor Leo Wiener. Remember, we just read that the trade between Africans and African-Americans, as we would say, began over 100,000 years ago. So he just confirmed that the trading masters in America before Columbus said Professor Leo Wiener, remember he's from Harvard, is proven by the representation of Negroes in America sculpture and design, but more specifically by Columbus emphatically, um, emphatic on reference to Negro traders from Guinea who trafficking in gold alloy, all right, Guinea of precisely the same composition and bearing the same name as frequently referred to by early writers in Africa. This is from Africa and the Discovery of America. In this regard, the testimony of Nicholas Leon proved instructive on how ancient the 
African presence was in America. In fact, he said that the black people were the original people of Africa, of Mexico. So that means they were the original people of America. The almost extinction of the original Negro during the time of the Spanish conquest and the memory of them in the most ancient traditions induce us to believe that the Negro was the first inhabitants of Mexico. This is from the, on the um, history of uh, the general history of Mexico, 1919. Mm. But they didn't go anywhere. They just moved from out of Mexico into Alabama, well, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and on up. We just moved from out of Mexico. We didn't, we didn't, um, they didn't kill us off. We just moved. We got the, they said, they said, we got the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> Riva Placencio, a Mexican scholar, stresses that point. It is indisputable that in very ancient times, the Negro race occupied our territory, Mexico. The Mexicans uh, recall a Negro god, Istelotum, all right, which means black face. <laughs> all right? Istelotum. Istelotum means black face, all right? Colonel A. Barstein said that he saw in the collection in Ecuador a statuette of a Negro that is at least 20,000 years old. 20,000 years old. So once again, 20,000 years old, 50,000 years old, 100,000 years old, that is before the so-called Native Americans, before the so-called Indians. Because remember, they say that they just came after the Bering, they came across the Bering Strait, which was only 10,000 years ago before the melting of the snow. So that means they only came 10,000 years ago. Well, hold up. <laughs> I just showed you Negro statuettes 20,000 years ago, just showed you 50,000 years ago, Dr. Albert Goodyear saying that we was already on Savannah River in South Carolina. 100,000 years ago, we just showed you that we were doing import and export with one another. All before the so-called American Indians, Native Americans, whatever term in which that they want to refer to themselves as Indians, even though the word Indian means black people, we was already here. And they show you the faces of those who was already here. Can you deny this face? <laughs> <laughs> If you, if you can, let's get the books. African presence in ancient Af um, America that came before Columbus by Dr. Ivan Barcelona. Or the African presence in America before Columbus by Floyd W. Um, um, Hayes III. Hell, Virginia Stein, Dr. Virginia Stein McIntyre, she says this. Check this out, what she says. There was still a problem of the United States Geological Survey team date. That date placed the site of Hio on optical to 250,000 to 350,000 years ago. Now hold up, if the blacks were the only people in Mexico, and then you got sites that dates back to 250,000 to 350,000 years ago, which is even before the trade network that we right. developed 100,000 years ago, and there was already Negroes in Mexico, then that means who was already here? On all accounts, it keeps showing us over and over again that we was already here. Every time we find a scientist of their own, they had to verify it. So guess what they told her to do? They said, um, ma'am, what you're going to have to do is take a zero off of that. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to we'll deal with 25,000, maybe wow. you know, 35,000. But this 250,000, 350,000-year-old thing is not going to work for us, um, ma'am. we we'll to take that off. That's what the Mexican... Um, um, government told her, and she said, I'm not going to do it. Mm. I'm not going to do it. No. So, guess what they did? They tried to discredit her, but they couldn't. No, so, so, right here it says the ambassador reported this to the Secretary of State of the United States, who leaned upon the United States Geological Survey to change their dates. The United States Geological Survey went back to the team and told the members that the date was going to be changed. They was going to do away with one zero, thus making the date 35,000 years ago. I can't. See, this is the liars. I can't. This is the liars. So why should I believe anything that they say when this was this was the Secretary of State of the United States? This was the United States survey, um, Geological Survey. They don't want you to know who you are. 
They never did. They never did. So, we see that we was already here and there was impact after impact and after impact of us coming here for hundreds and thousands of years as we've seen. Well, according to Dr. Wow. Clyde Winters, PhD, he states that in 1300s, many Malians sailed to the Americas. Although most Malians settled in Brazil, Mexico, and mm. the mountains along the Mississippi River, and some Malians settled in Florida, who became known as the Seminole mm. and the Yamasee. Wow. Yeah, same people. Right here, African employer who, um, emperor, excuse me, who ruled Mali, which means where the kings live, in the 1400th um, century discovered America was nearly 200 years before Christopher Columbus. All right? So they keep talking about Christopher Columbus, but Abu Bakr II was already here, and he was called the Voyager King. He loved the voyage. He was Actually, he ruled one of the richest and largest empires on Earth at that time in West Africa. All right? His brother took over after he left, who was known as Mansa Musa. Everybody heard of Mansa Musa? Well, this is Abu Bakari, who is Mansa Abu Bakari. But Mansa Musa ruled after him. He left and he came here. This is where you find these Omec heads at. All right? Some of these Omec heads came from this right here. It was a continuation of the king's rule. Right? So right here, well, I should say artifacts, not necessarily the heads themselves, but the artifacts. But right here, Abu Bakari had undertaken two expeditions into the Atlantic Ocean. According to the Malian scholar, um, the Awara, in his book, The Saga of the Abu Bakari II, virtually all that is known about Abu Bakari II is from the um, account of um, Chihab al-Umari. Al Umari visited Cairo after Mansa Musa stopped there during his historic Hajj to Mecca and recorded a conversation between Musa and his host, Abu Hassan Ali ibn Amir Habib. According to Musa, Abu Bakari became convinced that he could find the edge of the Atlantic Ocean in the Alpha Dela expedition of 200 ships to find it. All right, one ship returned. The captain related the expedition that they have come upon a river that was powerful current in the ocean. The current took most of the fleet away after the, um, which the captain turned back. According to Musa, Abu Bakari was untiered, all right? And launched an even larger expedition with himself as the head of this time, departed with 2,000 vessels. Mm. So here it is. 2,200 vessels came to America before Columbus, 200 years before Columbus from West Africa. So when they say, well, y'all got West African um, DNA, yeah, not because y'all took us from there, but because Abu Bakari brought 25,000 of his people here. That's how many people he brought. 22 to 25,000 people came on those 2,200 ships. That means he brought a whole city with him. Because think about, is there 22,000, 25,000 people even in Henderson? Think about it. There's not even that many people here in this town, in Henderson. But yet, sometimes you see new faces. <laughs> and they came here 200 years. So think about 22,000 to 25,000 people that was already here. Now, this is now, now think about it. This is so called black people who was meeting other black people <laughs> who was already here over the 5,000 years of the Omec history, even further back of the Nubian Egyptians, 50,000 year history, 
Further back to the African 100,000 year history, Africans was already here. So-called Nubian Egyptians was already here. The Mandinka people was already here. They became known as the Yamasi people. They became known as the Lenape people. They became known as the Cherokee. They became known as the um, Chick uh, um, Chickasaw. They became known as the Choctaw, the Washita. They became known as the Creek, the Muscogee, all these names. But these was black people in the beginning. He was already here. Get the book, Columbus, Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust, Slavery and the Rise of European Capitalism. He says in the book, Dr. John Henry Clark, it must also be added that Americo Vespusky in his voyage to America witnessed the Bandinkas of Mali, the Omex, and the Songhai Empires, later identified as what? The Moroccan Empire out in the Atlantic, returning to Africa. One of our greatest minds and historians, John Henry Clark stated that the Mandinkas, uh, or the Mandingos of Mali, the Omex and the Songhai empires was later identified as the Moroccan empire. So when they say that, um, that, um, that the Moroccans, um, that there was no Moroccan empire or Moorish empire, they lying. Historically, these were the people. The Omex was here in South America, Mexico on up into the Mississippi Delta, all right? It was part of the Sunkai Empire, the Kushite, the Malian Empire. All of that is the same thing, the Ultima Empire. All of that is the Moorish Empire. We know this to be the truth. Here is the Swedish warship Vahe. It sunk in 1628 and was re recovered in the ocean in 1961 almost completely intact, 1628. They got to show me the slave ships. <laughs> this ship is just as old as any slave ship, 1628. We're the slave ships from the 1700s. We're the slave ships from the 1800s. This one was almost completely intact. Show me the slave ships. There's no slave ships in no museum. Go to the Louvre in Paris. The French participated in the slave trade and white supremacy. Go to England to the British Museum. No slave ship. Come here to America to the Smithsonian's. No slave ship in Washington, D.C. They can't show you a slave ship. They can show you the chains. <laughs> they can't show you a slave ship. But here's a slave ship from 1628, completely and almost completely intact. So who were slaves on her? What I'm saying is that uh, they didn't bring us here. Well, okay, right. But, but who were the slaves back then? Oh, they were. Right, right. The Irish, um, English, the Irish, and the um, um, the Scottish, they were mostly the slaves during this time period. And I'll get to that in a second. I'm getting ready to show that. All right. But as you see here, we got a turban on and the Mayans who just finished confessing to us of who built what is carrying us, as you see here. <laughs> All right. Did the ships from Mali make it to America? Oh, yeah, they did, as you can see. <laughs> Brother got the hat on, got the turban on, and, and they and they picking up the little boat, you know, or whatever they carry in the morning. And they get on their little hats and everything. Some black yeah. friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This, yeah. This, these, these old Mayan vases depicting black nobles wearing Moorish turbans. This is 600 to 800 AD. So this is even 500 years before Abu Bakari came with 22,000 to 25,000 of, of our people from out of West Africa. This is 500 years. So this is 700 years before Christopher Columbus and the Mayans are carrying us and saying, yo, these are the gods. Right here, this is proof that the Aztec was black people. Montezuma was a man of middle size, middle in size, thin, and like all Indians, of a very dark complexion. Like all Indians. Yeah, because word Indian means black people. So they had to tell you of a very dark complexion. Now, I'm sorry you don't see a dark complexion with the individuals in which they refer to now as the Indians or the American Indians or Native American. 
these dark complexion that they're talking about are these people here. <laughs> Who's known as the Dallas, the Algonquin, the Powhatan, the Shinnecock, the Kotini, the Asinbani, the Navajo, the Ananuia, the, um, the Quilcini, the Choctaw, the Kickapoo, all right, and the Lakota. This is how these people looked originally. Just a hundred years ago, y'all, this is how dark we were of these Indian tribes just a hundred years ago. Now, because of the mixing in and because of the stealing of birthright, you have Albion's Europeans come in, they mix in with our tribes, and then you see them become the chief of our tribes, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> These five dollar Indians is everywhere. But this is how we looked originally a hundred years ago. These are the tribes that I'm talking about that these are the indigenous people as we seen who was here. Five, 700 years to, to 900 years before Columbus. 200 years before Columbus. 250,000 to 350,000 years before Columbus. <laughs> Y'all get it? <laughs> we was already here. All right? And the Empress proves that. All right? She proves it. Get her book, Return of the Ancient Ones. I'm not going to even read it. We get her book. She said it right here. Empress Verdiasi wrote in her book, The Return of the Ancient Ones, that 85% of the blacks over here in America was already here before the slave trade. Only 15% of the blacks came from Africa. That's recently, up to 400 years in which they claim that they brought us here on slave ships. Only 15%. The other 85% of us was already here. We've been here, declared the Empress, explaining that the original Native Americans was mostly dark complexion, as I already showed you. That, that article of the Aztec Proved that she said, and we showed you the Mayans and the Mayan who actually said that the Nubian Egyptians were the ones who built these pyramids and was the ones who came over here. She said that the Mong Mongoloid Indians of Hollywood fame was minority tribes in the Northwest that was mixed with the blood of the Chinese invaders called the Yupik or Eskimos or Russian Italian, etc. They made up less than a third of the total population of Indians on this land. White folks don't owe black people in America 40 acres and a mule. They need to get up off our land and start paying us some rent and taxes. Uh oh. That's what the Empress told us. And she was right. Right here in the article, the inner city plow writes The Louisiana purchase in which her people are identified as the ancient ones, the Empress say their land was never included in any land deal. That it was not part of the Louisiana Purchase when sold by Spain to France. Nor was it bought in 1803 when France rolled it over to the United States of America. She writes President Thomas Jefferson was well aware of the fortunate land deal and stated his sentiments at the time. In truth, the land spoken of never had been part of the United States of America. This always belonged to the ancient ones. All right? This sounds like the same land President Abraham Lincoln was going to return to the Moors after slavery. He called it the Egypt of the West. Well, we just showed you that it was Egypt of the West. We showed you the Sphinx in Memphis, Tennessee. We showed you um, the Kincaid um, um, tunnels in Ohio. We showed you um, um, uh, um, Illinois, um, the, um, the relics in Illinois. All right, we showed you the pyramids and the temples, um, uh, the temples in Arizona. That was Egypt of the West, or of Chicago, Central America. Yeah. The land between the Rockies and the Allegheny Mountains from the Gulf of Mexico wow. up into yeah. Canada on both sides of the Mississippi. In 1848, the Washington and um, Turner Cut Nations took their land case before the United States Supreme Court and won their case under Judge Tan, the same judge who in 1856 gave his opinion, which was not a legal decision in a tragic Dred Scott case, which basically stated that there's nothing that a black man has that a white man is bound to respect, when he had to respect us. The result of this opinion meant further slavery and death to the Washington Tunica and other nations. They was murdered by tens of thousands and slaves, ran off their lands. Their names were changed to hide the truth of their history. The Washington became Washington and Tunica became wow. Turner. 
That's what happened. So when you meet a Turner, they turn a cup. When you meet a Washington, they wash it off. They're part of the imperial bloodline. This is why white people don't have the name Washington. Even George Washington's name wasn't Washington. His name was Westington. And he actually was Adam Weissop. Was his Austrian name. His English transliteration of his name was Westington. He became Washington as a form of mockery of the Washita Omex, who were the people who built this civilization, the architecture, as well as the um, uh, uh, the mounds and the pyramids. Do the Washita exist? Well, we got Washita River. We got the Washita Crossing, Washita Battlefield, Washita County. So yeah, the Washita exists. The Battle of the Washita. And who was in that? General George Custer. Anybody heard of George Custer? Or Colonel George Custer? They don't know which one he is. General or Colonel? They don't know. He goes back and forth. I've seen it written as Colonel George Custer or General George Custer. What it is that he became Custer. <laughs> That's what we do know. This is the Battle of Washington. The attack of Black Kettle, right? Now he was the chief was called Black Kettle. So what you think he looked like? <laughs> Cayenne or Cheyenne Camp, the Washington River Indian Territory by the Seventh Resume Cavalry under Major General Washington River begins in the Texas Panhandle, flowing to Oklahoma between the Canadian and the North and the North Fork of the Great to the South. It flows for hundreds of miles in an easterly direction. So there's plenty of Washita. Matter of fact, you go to the Mardi Gras, you're gonna see Indians who are us dressed in our outfits, and you see them holding up Washita Nation signs. You don't believe me? Here it is. Look at that little brother right there. They got him all upset looking. Wait, <laughs> man, shoot. <laughs> Some of y'all need to be holding up more of these signs. Washington Nation, what's wrong with y'all? And what do he got on his head? And what do he got at um, on there, on um, below his thighs, near his knee area? What we think is an Indian chief. Well, if that's the case, then why has he got it on? Is he playing chief? Is he playing Indian? Not as a Washington, he ain't. We know where it comes from. Bohemians are indigenous to America. It's called the Jun um, um, Jukanu. The Jukanu. It originated in America, not Africa. And so you'll find in the Bahamas, Bohemians doing the exact same outfits as the ones in Louisiana. What is in the Caribbean? What is in America? The southern region of America. Same outfits. But in the Bahamas, it's called the junk canoe, right? When my wife and I went there in 2016, we met the people um, um, who, who actually makes these outfits, all right? In Freeport, um, 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 Bahamas. Right here, we are the Aborigines, or as Lewis and Clark called us, the black and brown, bushy headed original inhabitants of North America. The Washington and Turnica families carry the imperial bloodline, and it's the Washington and Turnica. The Europeans took control of our lives and forced us to take on names Washington and Turner. This is told over and over again. The emperors keep telling us this over and over again in her writings. Not all of these peoples were black Aborigines. The Washington nation included the Washoe, the Choctaw, and several more tribes. These people were small and were the Choctaws. The Choctaw and the Turnica were all black. If the intent was to take the land, the last thing um, I know that the white man would have done was make it a known fact that they were black. Yet they have alluded to it between the lines of using words like Aborigines, not being white or red. 
All right, notice also the distance that we are talking about. One family owned the entire Washita. Whether you spell it Wichita, Oshita, Ashita, um, Upsa, um, Arkansas, Kansas, or Washa, it is still a black nation of chocolate brown people who were counted at three fifths of a person along with all the other blacks in the San Louisiana Purchase, and no deal was ever cut except to hang, rape, murder, poison, and steal their land. It's just what it was. So we understand that this is what took place. All right. Matter of fact, this is Michelle Gibson. She went with us um, uh, uh, um, a few years ago, actually, on a trip with us to Mexico, to Chesanisa, to um, Talon, to, um, um, to Cabal, to various um, uh, uh, pyramid sites there, right? And she's the founder of Piercing the Veil of Illusion, historian and researcher. And this is what she says. I'm seeing that there was an ancient, advanced global civilization called the Moorish Empire. All right, this was just um, um, 2018 when we went. Instead of the historical narrative that we've been taught about who built the world infrastructure, perhaps the different empires within empire, the Washita, there you go, the Phoenicians, the Tartarians, the Ottoman, but one unified worldwide civilization with its roots in ancient Mu or the Moria in Atlantis. The Washita Moors are an ancient people of North America living in the present day and the recently deceased Washita Empress Verdiasi was present, presented a charter by the United Nations in 1993, recognizing the Washita as the oldest indigenous civilization on earth. Based on my research, I take very seriously the belief among many research that there was a relatively recent worldwide mud flood liquidation event that wiped out this advanced civilization. And then there was a subsequent historical reset as they're trying to do a reset now. All right. And they're trying to use the vaccine nonsense to do it. Of the timeline by those responsible for the cataclysm, I do not believe the mud flood resulted from natural causes. And we know that's the truth, because when we find here, you can go to this website, um, Billy Game, uh, uh, Gam, Bell, um, Bala, Afro, Asiatic, Anthropology, WordPress.com. This is a long one, but check it out. Right here, it says between 355 to 1492 AD, the mighty Moorish Empire of what? North America. Southwest Asia, the Iberian Peninsula, and what? The Americas. So there was a Moorish Empire in the Americas, as Dr. John Henry Clark proved in his book that we just showed earlier, right? Of Christopher Columbus, the Holocaust of Christopher Columbus and the New World. That was once the name of the book by Dr. John Henry Clark. It changed now. So this is why when you get the, just think about the Marine song. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. Well, hold up, Montezuma is in Mexico. Tripoli like, is in Libya, which is in Africa, near Egypt. Just like that song, that one, is my land, it's is your land. That shows you the expansion of our empire. <laughs> And that's what they were saying, that they conquered the Moors from the shores of Tripoli, which is in near Egypt, Libya and Egypt, which Tripoli is the capital of Libya. And that's why they also had to kill um, 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 Gaddafi. That's another story on that one. And then Montezuma, as we showed you earlier, was dark complected. Remember, we showed that earlier, he was dark skinned, he was dark complected. So they know that Montezuma was a Moor. Montezuma was a man of middle in size, thin, and like all Indians, of a very dark complexion. There it is. There it is. Montezuma. So the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. And you have these jar heads you know, who's Marines, and they just happy saying the song, not knowing that you're talking about your own demand. Your own demise. 
their own demise. Ain't that something? Right here, the Spanish colonialists adopted the native name of America. So the name did not come from America or Vespusky. They told us a lie. Just later, they told us about Christopher Columbus discovering America. They told us another lie. The Spanish colonialists adopted the native name, the native name, the native name of America to designate the first settlement on the mainland of the New World. But in those days, the rule of orthography was undefined. And in addition to the numerous errors of printing, names were spelled in any way which the writer considered most appropriate. And hence we have America, not only written as America, Amarabo, which is, this is where America was supposed to get his name from. His name was Albi or Alberto. And he took on the name Amerigo as being a discoverer of the new land, as they call it, the new world. And Amerigo, what's this? Pronounce that. Mara, what? Maraca. Maraca. Pronounce this one. Maraca. 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 Remember, we just showed you that Morocco, right, Morocco is the empire. What was the name of Bingo of America, which is talking about North, Central, the adjoining islands, and South America. All of that is America, y'all. The United States is of America. America not of the United States. <laughs> y'all get that? Yeah. All right. So what was the name? Morocco. 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 Well, hold up. Where have I seen that name at? Because I could have sworn that I've seen it before. Oh, here it is. The discovery of America. An outgrowth of what? The conquest of the world. The Moors by who? The Spaniards. So the Moors were in America. And this is how they said the discovery of America was because of the conquest of the Moors. The Spaniards are saying that we conquered the Moors and they're in America. So what was America named? It was named after the Moors, which was what? Have you just seen? Yeah. Morica. <laughs> Morica. Remember? Morica is America. And who is that? The Aboriginal or one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the Europeans. The Europeans are not Americans. They are settlers. They are invaders. The only ones who are Americans are the Aboriginals and ones of the various copper colored natives. Before Jack, we had the, we had books called Copper Romance. These were the sisters who was Copper. He was the so-called Native Americans, the real ones. All right. You don't believe that America was Morocco? Let's look at it in the Black Law Dictionary. Amorality. It says a court which has a very extensive jurisdiction of maritime cause, civil and criminal controversies arising from out the acts done under or related to the seas or questions of the prize. It is properly the successor of the consular court, which was emphatically the court of merchants and seagoing persons, in other words, the Moors, established in the maritime city of the revival of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. Hold up. After the fall of the Western Empire, I thought we was in the West. And I thought... This is still going. So what, what's the empire that they're talking about that fell? They're talking about the Olmec Empire, which is the Moorish Empire. How we know? Because it's going to tell you. To supply the wants of tribunal and might decide causes arising from out of the maritime commerce. Now, it says the successor to the consular courts. So now you go to the consular courts. What does it say? Courts held by the consul of one country within the territory of another. Just like the United States is in the territory of the Americas. <laughs> the United States is in the territory of the America. So this is why we are the Americans and they are the United States citizens. There's two jurisdictions here. They can't overrule us in any shape, form, or fashion when we're in our right mind. There's two forms of government. This is why there's two seals on the dollar bill. Look on the back of the dollar bill. 
The first seal that you see is the pyramid. That is our seal. The other seal is the seal that we gave them, which is the eagle. But the first seal is our seal. They say, oh, that's the Illuminati seal. Right. <laughs> right. Because the word more uh, within um, Hebrew means light. Beings of light. Illuminated. Right. So, so that shows you right there that we are the light beings. Right. But this is what it says. He says here, courts held by consul of one country within territory of another under a authority given by treaty. What treaty? The treaty of peace and friendship of, between the United States and Morocco. That's the treaty. And what happened in that treaty? Morocco recognized the United States. The United States at that time was what? Only 13 colonies. They were small colonies or towns that was on the edge of water ports where they were doing import and export. It was never the whole United States. This is why the Empress just told us that none of that land in which that they call <laughs> the Middle West, all the way from Mississippi and Louisiana, all the way up into almost two providence in the whole of um, Canada, that land never belonged to the Europeans. They did eminent domain. They took that over. Did eminent domain. Right here. For a settlement of civil cases. In some instances, they had also a criminal jurisdiction. But in this respect, were subject to the review by the courts of the home government. Well, what was the home government? The last of the United States consular courts was what? That's in the Blasco Dictionary. It put it right there in parentheses, Morocco. Now, what was Morocco? Say Morocco again. Uh -huh. Say this, say Morocco in this again. Morocco. 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 This is the trick that they've been playing the whole time. Morocco is America, which is Morocco. Right. It's the United States of Morocco. Mm -hmm. El Morocco. This is the trick. This is the Masonic trick that they've been playing the whole time. Taking this from out of our jurisdiction and placing this in theirs. This is why they had to had Martin Luther King run after the civil rights instead of human rights. <laughs> and Malcolm discovered that and Malcolm told them that. Malcolm said, hold up, why y'all fighting for civil rights that if you was recognized as a human being, civil rights would come automatically. You should be fighting for human rights. We should be taking that issue before the world government. We, be, we, we can have um, these colored nations to throw weight on our side and help us. But hold up, when did we give up our consular courts? It was abolished in what year? 1956. It was just abolished. One year after Martin Luther King comes on the scene and talking about they fighting for civil rights. Think about that. See, this is all gimmicks, all tricks, in which that causes us to have integration, in which now we no longer have our own court system, no longer have our own government. We're now part of their system with privileges, but never recognized as full citizens. And can't be, because the Dred Scott case say, you can never be a citizen, nor will you ever be a citizen of the United States. And that's good. I don't want to be a United States citizen, because I'm an American, as we just been saying. Who's an American by definition? <laughs> Let's see that again. Copper. An Aboriginal, one of the various copper-colored natives found on the American continent. By who? The Europeans. The original application of the name. So the original application of the name of America, which is Morocco, which is Morocco, is copper colored people, natives here, native, Na natives American. You get it? Native American? That's why you can use the term Native American because you want the natives, copper colored natives in the Americas. Hence, Native American. That's your connection. You keep forgetting that. Morocco was the first nation to recognize the United States. This is in Obama's speech. You can look at it on YouTube. So America 
was the first to recognize the United States, which was the 13 colonies or ports in the town, in the towns along the 13 uh, uh, states. He was the first to recognize them. America, Morocco, America was the first to recognize the United States. So America was not the United States. It never has been. So when they call themselves American, hold up, <laughs> hold up, <laughs> go a little bit too far. You're not American. You are a United States citizen. Remember, that's what you say. You are a United States citizen. I can't be a citizen. So therefore, we have a jurisdictional issue. You see that? Since I'm not a United States citizen, you will have to prove that in the court of law. And guess what? They can never prove it in court. Because as soon as you bring up the Dred Scott case decision, they shut the fuck up. Fuck my French. They shut up. Quick. Bring up the Dred Scott case law. Promise you, bring it up and watch what happened. They shut up quick. How I know? Because we done it. <laughs> my father-in-law was taking this to a court case, his daughter and myself. And as soon as we said to the um, to the attorneys, it was two of them, two DAs, assistant DAs. They was like, well, when we get back in court, you better go in there and say that you did such and such and such and such. And and um, um my wife said, um, excuse me, but um, we don't fall into your jurisdiction like that, ma'am. You ever heard of the Dreska case decision? We're not citizens. As soon as we got back in court, they said, oh, your honor, we're going to go in and dismiss the charges. We're not. Hold on, what just happened? Just outside, y'all was big, y'all was daggone bluffing. Y'all was big, the big bad wolf. Y'all was huffing and puffing, blow your house down just a second ago. Now, as soon as we get in court five minutes later, oh, yeah, honor, we're going to go in and dismiss the charges. Because we brought up the Dred Scott case decision. They can't get past it. That's the loophole so that you can't be in their system is the Dred Scott case decision. Because you're not a U.S. citizen in the States, nor will you ever be. How can you be when you are American? And the United States is of America. Is that what they tell you? It says the United States of America. They don't say America of the United States. So that means that America has a superior position than the United States. So you got to claim your rightful citizenship, which is as an American. American right. citizen. Is that why we don't hear anymore about the Moorish people that was on the highway? Right. It was a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. guns right. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Brother Jamal. Right. Yeah, Brother Jamal was up on that piece. You don't hear no more about it. Right. Right, because they, they didn't show you the part where they sued them also for how much they sued them for? Millions and millions of dollars. I can't remember how much. But yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was a lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah, it's on a download because they. Oh, yeah, it's going to be on the download because they can't mess with us because, once again, wow. once you bring up the Dress Scott case decision and all judges and lawyers and attorneys and esquires and uh, uh, sheriffs, which is bailiffs and clerks, everybody know who took their oath to the Constitution, they know the Dress Scott case. Briefly, could you? Go over the Dred Scott case is from 1856 to 1857. It was by Judge Tanny, the same judge in 1848, said that the Washita owned the land that the United States was trying to claim. Don't have any claim to it. The United States has no claim to it. And it was, therefore, we won. Mm -hmm. However, just nine years later, by 1856, 1857, what happened? Judge Scott comes before the court. He says, look, I was a um, slave, um, 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 even though it appears that I'm free, I'm not totally free. Um, he can still call me back into slavery if he chooses to. I want to be out of slavery. Well, guess what? The court says, well, you can't do that. Number one, you're coming in here with his last name, Scott. That's short for Scottish, Scotland. <laughs> he didn't know the history of Skoda which is um, Hesheb Suet, coming from out of Egypt, Queen Skoda. Queen Skoda actually is where the word Scott comes from. He didn't know that history. You know what I'm saying? So, so because he didn't know history, it was a period that he was just a Negro with a European name. And Judge Tanny ruled that there's nothing that a so-called Negro has that a white man is bound to respect. And not just that. That you're not a citizen of the United States, nor will you ever be. Now, I got a, a good friend I met through 
my father-in-law uh, uh, and, and, um, and, and my wife, uh, um, Mr. Matthews. He'd been a lawyer now for almost 50 years. And he used to come to these classes. He'd come to my classes and, um, you know, he loved, he loved them. Matter of fact, he called me um, um, a few times out um, after Mondays and be like, man, I wish you was back here in Fayetteville. I'll come to the classes. He loved the classes. His wife don't like it, but he loves it. <laughs> because it helped to put some of these pieces of this puzzle together that he knew that he was in school. He's a JD. He's a judicial doctor. All right? He's a judicial doctor. So of law. So he, he's having a doctoral degree in law. You see what I'm saying? So he's not a slouch. But when we started putting this information together, he was like, man, this is the most fantastic information I ever heard before. He said, man, if I was there going 20, 25 years younger, I'd run with y'all. Because <laughs> he, he like, he's about 75 now. So but he said he was about he said he was about 20, 25 years younger, boy. He said he'd run with his boy. He said he heard the word law on uh, C SPAN. On C SPAN. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what really got his, as they say, got his goat. He said, but not only that, he said when he was listening to the senators, House Representatives speak on the Moors, they said that the Moors are one of the only groups that is tax exempt. Mm -hmm. He's, they Which said piece it. is this? This was on CNN. He heard Recently? it. C-SPAN. No, C-SPAN. He heard it. He Recently? talked about it on C-SPAN and CNN. He, he heard them speak about it. Right. I don't I don't know what the program okay. was. Yeah. You know, he never told he never told he just told me about what happened. You know. But that makes sense. Hmm. All right. So right here, this is the first page of the Moroccan Treaty of 1787. Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin worked closely with the Moors in the Continental Congress to secure this treaty. In the Brabine um, collection, there's over 200 letters to the Bay of Morocco. Now, you got to realize, where was the Bay of Morocco at? We would think, oh, that, was, that must be Morocco in Africa. I'm going to show you something right quick that nobody has ever showed y'all before, nor deciphered before. Watch this. So. 200 letters to the Bay of Morocco from the Continental Congress. We think of Morocco and Africa. There was many Moors in the Continental Congress working with the European Masons, originally taught by the Moors. This would have formed a Novus Oral Seclarum, a new secular order of the world, of, of the ages of the world, or what is known as New World Order, or E Plumo Uno, which means out of, bless you, out of many people and nation, one. The Moroccan Treaty was very popular because according to the Constitution, treaties are the law of the land. This is Article 6 in the Constitution. This treaty specifically deals with Moors. The question may arise, all right, may arise now, how do we know that there was treaty said Moors? The so-called black people of the time is being referred to. There it is. Check this out. The United States is tributary to the Moors. They had to repay a 25 million, they have to repay a 25 million dollar in gold loan that we made to the United States government in 1861. They don't tell you about that, do they? The United States Congress is responsible to repay, which is why the seal of the Moors, the all C and I agreement, is on the back of the dollar bill. That's a memorand of the United States one dollar currency tender or IOU note. The European nations paid tribute to the Moors well into the 19th century. The book writer, David Matricci, in his book, The United States and Barbary Powers, he states that the United States, English, France, Dutch, Danes, and Swedes, and I may say all European nations are tributary to the Moors. Now, what do tributary mean? If you didn't know by reading United States and Barbary Powers, which for some reason that book can't be found nowhere on the internet. What is it called? United States and Barbary Powers. You can't find that book nowhere on the internet. It's disappeared over the last 10 years. All of a sudden that book just disappeared and can't be found nowhere on the internet. Now you still find these books. 
David Marici goes further in Ancient and Modern Britain, Volume 1 and Volume 2, and states the Moors had control of the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. This is why the United States Marine song of defeating the Moors from the halls of Montezuma, which is Mexico, to the shores of Tripoli, allegedly uh, the capital of Tripoli, uh, cap uh, treaty, uh, Tripoli is the capital of Libya near Egypt. Confirming the song, they extended the Moorish Empire in the dominion of a Mexican or Atlantis. The United States is not a nation, nor a nationality. That's why we're not United States citizens, because it's not a nationality. Just like Negro, Black, and color is not a nationality. How can you be United States citizen? Is you a United States sin? What is a United States sin? What is that? Anybody know? Citizen. United States citizen, right? Is the United States citizen? What is that? United States citizen or United States citizen? What is that? That's not a nationality. The United States is of America, but America, Al Morocco, Al Morocco is not of the United States. Neither one has a superior position. Nevertheless, America is a nationality. This is why they say they are Americans, because not America is a nationality. This is why we are Moorish American. America is a nationality. I need. This is what Prophet Nebuchadnezzar said. I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America, not of the United States. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of the government. This is the divine warning by Prophet Nebuchadnezzar, um, um, which is for the nations. All right? He did not say United States citizens because there is a difference between United States citizen and American citizen. If you don't believe this, you can go to the Rulings of Empires by Count Bonnie. All right? Joe Barlow himself was an American statesman who was known, well known, for drafting the Imam of Pleasing um, Treaty of Tripoli. You have the Treaty of Tripoli, in which it was written that the United States, this is between 1750 to 1812, which was written that the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. This is in the Treaty of Tripoli, the eighth statute, 154 area. And you, so, mm -hmm. and you know about voting. It's like you, you, they let us vote even though we're not citizens. Right. That's why they have, every 25 years, they have to renew your voting privilege. The first one to do it was Johnson. After the death and assassination of Kennedy, Johnson became president and he passed the what? The voting right act or bill and you know what happens when you get a bill what happens somebody got to pay for it right okay so that means the bill gives you a privilege so the first 25 years was him the second 25 years was ronald reagan 18 what 19 um 83 84 is when he signed it and you know then by 2007 25 years later guess who signed it w george bush jr and you know about the 50 years when a lady right. has to do, renew the contract, the treaty with them, or else they have to can't do business on the land. Right. Right. But see, that was up in 2004. Right. <laughs> so that means that we slipping on collecting what is ours. All right. So, but see, they got the guns, they got the weapons. That's why I said we got to ease our head out of the lion's mouth. Do it in steps. The steps are going to get us there. We just got to do it in steps. That's all. No problem. I do a step. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, I, you know, shoot, we can end up doing the kid and play step. <laughs> you know, uh, you do the kid and play step. You still get the, you can still get the step. It don't matter which way it goes, as long as you get the step going. So right here, treaty with the Comanche, etc. August the 24th, 1835. If you don't know who you are, this treaty here is going to tell you. We're talking about the Washita. It said the Comanche and the Wichita Indians and their associated bands. Well, hold on. Who is the Washita or Wichita? They tell you. Between these nations or tribes, the Cherokee, Muscogee, which is the Creek, the Choctaw, the Osage, the Seneca, and the Quakpa. These are the Washita. So Washita are various tribes that came together to form the Washita. These nations came together. And what happens when you have nations? Nations become an empire. Let me explain to you how that happens. You have yourself as an individual, you get with someone else, 
that becomes the nucleus of the family. You have children, male and female children. That becomes what? The nucleus, right? Then they have children. You know, you got brothers and sisters yourselves. And then what happened with that? Then we got what? Tribes or clans then become tribes. Then tribes become what? A nation after you have so many people. Man, should you go to a family reunion of um, Williams or Smiths and you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> Thousands of them <laughs> at the park. And what y'all doing? Kicking out? Yeah, what, you a family member too? They don't care, they'll take you in too. Come on, get some of these hot dogs. <laughs> You said the police on you now. You can't be oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. That's the Karen. Right. Becky. The, Karen. the, Karen. the, Karen. Right. the Becky's and the Karen's might get you. Karen phenomenon. Right, right. The Karen's and the yeah. Becky's might get you now. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, but, but now we're looking at nations become an empire. When nations come together, it's an empire. So this was an empire. So when we say Washington Empire, or the Empire of Washington, this is what we're talking about because it was what? Washington nations, nations, the Comanche and Wichita nations, that's plural. So these are nations that come together, Cherokee, Muscogee, which is the Creek, the Choctaw, the Osage, the Seneca, and the Quaqua. What it says here, there shall be perpetual peace and friendship between all citizens of the United States of America and all the individuals composing the Comanche and Wichita nations. So we was not US citizens. <laughs> we wasn't US citizens. And it says it right here. Comanche and Wichita nations and their associated bands and tribes of Indians between these tribe nations and tribes and the Cherokee, Muscogee, Choctaw, Osei, Seneca, and the Quaqua, nations and tribes of Indians. So this is Washita, is the Cherokee. The Muscogee, which is the Creek, the Choctaw, the Osage, the Seneca, the Quakpa, and many other tribes, the Yamasee, the, uh, the Lenape, the, uh, um, the Lumbee, uh, um, all of these are the various tribes in which they actually all came and banded together. All right. Matter of fact, the Empress speaks about that. All right. And these are the Washington Empire's descendants Cherokee, Creek. Chickasaw, Choctaw, Seminole, Blackfoot, Arakara, the Sioux, the Kiowa, the Mohawk, the Cheyenne, the Mandan, the Yamasee, the Ar um, Arawak, the Lumbee, the Montauk, the Nanakote Moors, the Lenape, the Melungeons, the Mohican, the Comanche, the Nice Piers, the Netshi, the um, Pawnee, the Washoe, um, um, Tuscarora, the um, um, Catawba, the Mi'kmaq, the Osage, um, the Jingasing, the Manapani, the Powhatan, the um, Wapanog, and many more tribal nations. Oh boy, that was a lot, I'm telling you. Because we're all connected, it's all our people. And what they did, they did something very slick. Now we just said that the Osage, now this is from another book. When it speaks about the Osage, it tells you who they are in the Quark Pop. Remember, we just seen them here. The Osage and the Quark Pop. Well, hold on. How did these nations look? Well, according to this book, it tell you exactly how they look. The Osage and Quark or Quark Pop speaks the same language with slight dialectical differences. The Osage and the Quark are both what? Very dark. Skin. Mm. Wow. Like these mongoloids that they've been telling you about that you see from Hollywood. He was very dark skinned. These are you and I, our ancestors, our relatives. Let me tell you what happened 20 years ago. All right, we was living in an apartment, me and some of my friends. Um, Cubby, his father was a high priest from out of Cuba. He came to the apartment. I wasn't even there that day. But, but Cubby and everybody else told me what happened. He came to the apartment that we were staying in. He's able to see spirits. He came to the apartment and he said, I don't understand. This is what he was saying. I don't understand. 
He said, why is all these Native American spirits here? I, I, it basically, he was expecting to see African spirits because, yeah. you know, yeah. so-called Africans. You know, we African, which I don't deny that we African. Yeah. I'm just saying that we further back to 400 years and you ain't bring us over here. <laughs> we bought ourselves, okay? I ain't saying that, you know, now we might have mixed in, you know what I'm saying, with some of the Africans, you know what I'm saying, who came from there 400 years ago. But predominantly, my bloodline was already here. That's just what it is, as we showed you through the various impacts in which that occurred, all right, over 600 million years ago. So he came in and he said, why is all these Native American spirits? I don't understand why all these um, Native American spirits are here. So this is what he said. So when I got back, Cubby told me who was, that was his own um, father um, um, about what his father was saying, you know, about the spirits and everything. And everybody else was telling me, you know, what was going on. So I said, oh, I said, Cubby, um, let me explain to you. Uh, we're indigenous and aboriginal from this land mass. So, yes, we're African. However, the Native American lineage also spawns from us, too. I said, remember, the Omex was here 5,000 years ago. I said, you see how the Omex looks. So that was us, too. So I just explained a little information to him. But this happened 20 years ago, 2000, in the year 2000. Well, 20 years ago. So that's what happened. So we have the spirits of the ancestors back at us in the Native American, not just African, but Native American spirits. All right, predominantly. This is why I'm able to do this type of information and gather that information because they're backing us. They want us to get the truth out. So you want to know how the Osage and the Quad Pot look? There they are. This still exists? Yeah. <laughs> look like my grandma. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what would they be called nowadays if they, if they took off their garb and walked down the street? Where is that located? I can't tell you exactly where it was located at. What in your what, town? What, what, <laughs> what town? But if they didn't have that garb on, if they walked down the street right here today in Henderson, North Carolina, they would look just like you and I and be recognized as you and I, known as Negro, Blacks, and Colors, or African Americans, as they <laughs> refer to us nowadays, right or wrong. Right. Yeah. All right. So that's the problem in which that we've been having. Right, so if you go to the DOS roll or the DOS final roll, which is on the site Oklahoma Historical Society, go there, put it in the engine search in the internet, Oklahoma Historical Society, and go to the DOS roll and put in your last name, your family's last names. So um, uh, just put in the oh, family's last yeah. name. It tells you what the original. It tells name. you. It tells you yeah. the Native American tribe that you connected to. Yeah, European name. Yeah. yeah. No, no. You think it's European. Right, but it's it ain't. actually right. Like he was saying before, it's changed. Right. So basically, every name that, that there is, like he said before, is changed to what it actually should be. Right. What and guess what? Name? Ryan is on there. Because <laughs> me and Jamie checked already. What's the name of Kennedy is on there. We already checked. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot. There's right. A, there's, you, you, they have different sections. It's in alphabetical order. Right. And it tells you if you Cherokee, Choctaw, um, uh, uh, um, Seminole, right. you click on Chickasaw. Yep. It tells you. I heard that when you asked Cherokee. Exactly. I know you do. Yeah, because you see by your cheekbones, your, your face. Your, and they, some people say by your teeth. They can tell if you're Indian by right. your teeth. Shovel teeth. Correct. If you have shovel teeth, then you're indigenous to here. Right, and your ear Because Africans, too. pure Africans, right. do not have shovel teeth. teeth are smaller, some of them, because some of them don't And they meat. don't have shovel teeth. Right. Shovel teeth is like if you take the top four and the bottom four and take your tongue and put behind them and you feel like a little indenture, those are what is called shovel teeth. Mm -hmm. If you have those teeth, then you are indigenous to America. You have those teeth? Yes, you do. <laughs> so, so you do. The four, the four top. Check the four top ones. And they're right here. One, two, and they're three, mainly four. big too. And these four here. One, two, right. Three, the top four. Are normally Check big. those four bottom ones and those four top. Four top ones. Got a little indentation. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So you just exactly. Put, uh, mm -hmm. sorry. Go those are what is called shovel teeth, and only Native Americans have those teeth. 
Africans, pure Africans do not have those teeth. And some Caucasians, their teeth are smaller, so you right. of course they're not. And, and or, right, and, and they don't have these teeth. All right, they don't have these teeth. So this is genetic. If you got those, that little indenture behind your teeth, you then that something? means you're native from here. Oh yeah, I was just, um, I was. You said I got those indentures, so that's how I know I'm from here. Yeah. How you know? <laughs> you check oh. all four top teeth and four bottom teeth. I have something behind there, but I'm. It, I'm, it, I'm, I'm there you go. Come on now. But I have, have something my, from behind there. <laughs> no, no, no. I have a retainer in there, so I can't even. Oh, uh, oh, shoot! You gotta take that out before you know. Come on now. You know you get. You can't have plastic in your mouth and try to um, fill your teeth. It's permanent. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah, it's permanent. Oh, oh for yeah. sure. Well, I'm good with that thing. Well, I'm pretty sure you got it. I'm pretty sure you got it. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from the Caribbean, so I'm wondering. Oh, okay. Yeah, I try to put my last name in, but it's just what not part? coming up. Barbados. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you checked? Have you checked? Um, yeah, so What's I did. Yeah. I put yeah. my, my last so, name in there. Well, yeah, I got to ask him again. Yes. So I, I have it on my computer. I don't know. Okay. get to ask me again now. Your other family's name. Other family's name. Okay. Right. All right. Um, what was your mother's maiden name? Voice. Okay. What was your father's maiden name? Well, well not yeah. maiden name, but would you say? You know. Mm -hmm. Would you say your B? Want to start with a B? Oh, yeah, my mother's maiden name. Voice. -E. I think that's. I think that was one of them was on there. There, there's different variations. It's B O Y D. There was that. Uh, okay. Yeah. But I was B O Y D B O Y C E. But some oh, of that, C E voice, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's some of them that's been yeah, changed too. Yeah. Right. That might be the original name. Ah, you yeah. see? There it is. Okay. Yeah. She got she yeah. got it on. What's the name of that website? Oklahoma Historical Website or Research. Oklahoma Historical Research. So what tribe do we say that the voice? Oh, creek. Freedom. Freedom. The creek. Yeah. yeah. See? The creek. <laughs> you got it. The creek. And who's the creek? Uh oh. Hold on. Let's go back. Once again, there's part of the creek is the Muskogee. Okay. So Cherokee, Creek, which is Muskogee, Choctaw, Osei, Seneca, and Quapa was all part of the Wichita, Washita Indians, okay. nations. My birth name was Gregory Allen. I just found out recently. And the Allen name is on the DOS roll as Cherokee and Choctaw. <laughs> A-L-L-E-N. The Ryan is Cherokee mm -hmm. on there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so when you say you got some Cherokee, exactly. Yeah, I, heard, I heard the old ones talk about it. Exactly. The old ones, no. <laughs> we done got caught into Negro, Black, and Color, and African American. <laughs> but they know who they were. Oh, this is interesting. I got to go, though. Okay. I got some websites. Yeah, God bless you, you guys. Website. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Nice to meet you again. Okay. Good same here. Take care. Be careful out here. No worries. Here. About your way. Good. All right. Peace now. Take care. God bless you. All right. See you. All right. So you go to the DOS final roll, and they will tell you who is on your family line as far as these native tribes. Right? The queen mother at the time, she just recently passed away. A lady salam upon her. Um, was Bernie and Cherokee, as you see here, Chickasaw by blood. Cherokee and Chickasaw by blood. That's the same lineage that I have. So it's crazy that me and her got along so well. She said, I always appreciated you and love your work and everything. And I was like, sure, I appreciate you for the information you be putting out all the time, not realizing you're part of the same family lineage. Allen and Bernie are Cherokee and Chickasaw yeah, and, and Choctaw. Yeah, it seemed like most people who are like relatives, you know how if you don't know your relatives, right. y'all click you right click. away mm -hmm. because right away. and then you may find out they're your mm -hmm. cousin from three. Right. Exactly. 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 
So these have been the tricks that they have done. The Empress Bertiasi Tierra will wash the toilet, turn the guest on and obey. She was born May the 4th, 1927, and she passed on my born day, April the 19th, 2014. On that day, April the 19th, as my wife and I was heading out, we seen 10 turkeys take off in flight. Now, your turkeys don't fly. Right. <laughs> but they flew that day, and that's how we knew that somebody great passed on. Because flight and birds symbolize spirit. And it was 10, exactly 10 turkeys. And they flew right in front of our car. Now they could have went into the woods, walk, walk, turkeys walked into the woods. Instead, they came towards the road and flew right in front of our car and took off and flew. You we were like, what in the hell? Damn, turkeys flying? God damn, that's like a pig flying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we knew that something happened and then after that we seen a white crane come overhead we was outside and the white crane just came through overhead mm -hmm. and we were just outside practicing the white crane chi gongs and tai chi <laughs> and then a white crane came across no more than a month later in May my teacher who taught us the white crane, he passes just a month later. So I call, so the first turkeys taken off in flight symbolized the empress. The white crane symbolized also my teacher, Sonyata Saraswati. So I got on the phone and I called Brother Kaye and I said, yo, how um, you know, Saraswati doing? How's Sonyata doing? He said, now, girl, I said, yeah, I know. We just seen the white crane fly overhead. We just was outside on the white crane, and the white crane flew right overhead. I said, um, I, don't, I don't think he has long, bro. You know? You already was in the 40-day span of when you know that someone is going to pass. But the turkeys symbolize the empress. The white crane symbolize our teacher who passed just no more than a few weeks later. So she passed on my born day, April the 19th. So it was like she was saying, look, we're going to leave some of this in your hands. Because I met her in 2004. My wife and I met her in 2004. She was in the nursing home in California, in Anaheim, California. And Joe, her son, took us there so that we can speak to her about carrying on the washer tool. First question she asks, have y'all read my book? This is after she asked us all our names and everything. So we, took, we was telling her all our names and everything. And, she, and, I, and we said, yes, ma'am, we, we read your book. Here go, we got your book right here. She said, good. That is what y'all gonna need to carry this on. So she knew that she couldn't carry it on. So it was our job to keep this thing going, okay? It was our job. Now, if you see who's behind her, is a man by the name of C.M. Bay, Charles Mosley Bay. Charles Mosley Bay is who she studied with as a study group that she studied with in Cleveland, Ohio, of the Moors. This is where she got a lot of the information from in the process on how to secure and do what she's doing as Washington, as well as also, I was, he formed what was known as the Great Seal National Association of Moors, as well as also the Clock of Destiny Moors. I was in a mirror, all right, and was about to become the um, the Southern Regional Amir, all right, and I was in a mirror. A mirror means a uh, 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 a chief, a uh, head in the Great Seal National Association of Moorish Affairs, and um, I was given that title by Yusef Rami Bay. Yusef Rami Bay was the head of the Great Seal ten years ago, all right. He passed um, a few years ago, um, about, probably about, yeah, about now, 10 years ago. Yeah, dang, it's been about that long. Yeah, yeah. But he passed about that time ago. And before he passed, he gave me the title, Amir. So I was also in the mirror in the Great Seal National Association of Moorish Affairs, as well as also 
prince, crown prince in the United Washington. He dug the money. So I held both titles and we understood she studied the CM Bay. All right? Here's another picture that you can see here. She purposely sat under the picture in order to show the lineage, as we can tell. Well, who is CM Bay? Well, he did three certificates. He registered in the Library of Congress. You have double A seven seven eight six nine. You have double A two zero nine three one six, and the, probably the most important one, you have double A two 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 one four one. Very powerful. Do the knowledge. Well, when you do the knowledge, you find that the registration number A A two 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 one four one class A. This number refers to the code of the law of the United States of America of the General and Permanent Charter. In 4th January the 3rd, 1935, 1934 edition, which is United States Title 22, Chapter 2, Section 141. What is that title, United States Title 22? Foreign Relations and Intercourse, page 954. Chapter what? Two is what? Consular Courts. Well, hold on, hold on. The Consular Courts allegedly was a, was a, um, abolished in 1956 by President Dwight Eisenhower. However, CM Bay, before that even happened, 20 years before that shit even happened, he put it on the records at the Library of Congress so that the Moors can always have their consular court. In other words, we can still always be American. <laughs> He knew it 20 years beforehand. Right here, chapter two, consular courts, section 141, judicial authority generally to carry in full effect the provisions of the treaties of the United States with certain foreign countries. So America is foreign to the United States. So he just gave you a way out. If we use these particular registrations that's at the Library of Congress, in particular, double A, triple two, one, four, one, which is right there, which happens to be what we talked about earlier. I don't know if you was here, but it happens to be what we talked about earlier. Isn't that something? About the consular courts. And remember, in the consular courts, let's go back. In the consular courts, we showed earlier. Uh, Where's that joint at? Ah, come on. We showed in the consular courts. Remember? Let's see. I think it's almost here. In the Black Law Dictionary, we showed it earlier. Ah, I think this was the one we had to go back out of and we pulled up the other one that I had. Because this shows you. This is it here. Admiralty and Consular Court. So that means we still have Consular Court. This is what Taj and them are trying to do is bring back the consular court. Because CMB put it on registry 
It means that it's never been um been um so, abolished. It means that it's never been abolished, sure. They have lied to us. It could have been abolished if 20 years prior to he put it under registration at the Library of Congress. It means that we can still utilize that information. So here it is. Right, so here in the Black Law Dictionary, the Lux Fourth Edition. This is the one that you really want, right? This is what you really want right here. There's a Lux right. Edition. Mm -hmm. This is what you really want. All right, so in that we showed you earlier about particular words that was from the definition of Amorality and Kusula court. So here it is, we find in that fourth edition Kusula, remember we just showed you. So that was what he was specifically speaking about as far as the court situation, consular court. So he gave us access always to our consular court. We just had to come back into alignment with it and enforce it. So on a public side, it appears to have been what? Abolished. However, on the private side, 
registered at the Library of Congress, he did what? Once again, look at the consumer court. Courts held by the council of one country within the territory of another under authority given by treaty for the settlement of civil cases. In some instances, they had a small or well, criminal jurisdiction, but in this respect, were subject to review by the court of the home government, the last of the United States Consular Court, Morocco, was abolished in 1956. So that's the only that's the only court system in which that there was. Was Morocco? Why? Because Morocco acknowledged the United States, not the other way around. So what appeared to have been abolished then is no longer really abolished on the private side because the same one that's double a triple two one four one was put on file at the library of congress meaning that we was always able to re-establish intercourse with the consumer courts with our consumer courts as you see here you understand that so that is what we really have to understand. Now, if you don't understand Morocco, this is what happens. The Morocco in North Africa wasn't established until 1956. So that's why it says that it was abolished in 1956. Morocco in Africa, the kingdom of Morocco was not established until 1956. Therefore, Morocco that first recognized the United States in 1777 as a nation, couldn't have been Morocco that was established in North Africa in 1956 because the 1956 Morocco was not around in 1777. The Morocco that is referred to is Morocco, India, or India, or and or Morocco, Illinois, both of which was major trading hubs due to their connection to the Mississippi River and the Great Lakes and due to the other industries built around them making them both centers of commerce and learning. This is who recognized them. Right here, America, Morocco, America. As you see here, Morocco. This has always been the trick. So this is how we did the documentation at the Great Seal National Association of Moorish Affairs. Right, we put Moroccan Treaty between 1787, National Archives, Washington, D.C. You also had double A, triple two, one, four, one. This is Yusuf Rami Gay. This is who gave me my authority as being a mirror in the Great Civil National Association of Moorish Affairs. The Empress gave us the ability. This was the embassy of the Empress in Louisiana, Monroe, Louisiana. This is our embassy today, right here in Henderson, North Carolina. This is our United Washington Embassy and Consulate, which has been put on the record right here as a um, statement of appointment of agent for a nonprofit association. Right at the Secretary of State. And he's verified some things here. So here we are, as we said, the last name Allen Cherokee. And here it is that in 1866, during the Civil War, the last leader of the Cherokee Nation was a Muslim named Rahmad or Rahmad Ibn Wati or Ramadan. Rahman or Ibn Wati. 
All right. And as you see, look at that, look at that hair. Mm -hmm. That's not straight hair, right. is it? <laughs> and that turban, look at the features. Like okay. I just want to explain how you get to that and how you get to the images nowadays. And if you notice, look how large Cherokee was. Yeah, yeah. This is why a lot of our ancestry is Cherokee. Mm -hmm. Look how large it is. Cherokee, 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 Cherokee. So this is basically a map of the different where different people were at one point mm -hmm. in time. Okay. Right. And you see, even to this day, Cherokee is the largest nation. Even to this day. In Muscogee, this which is the creek, which you found out. You know, Where's the creek at? Muscogee. Um, is, this is Florida. Yes. What's right off the coast of Florida? All the islands. There you got it. You got it. Mm -hmm. You got it. You're traveling back and forth between Florida and the islands. Same people. Arawak. Then you had the creek. Trail of Tears. Yeah. The Boy Trail of Tears. Yeah, the Trail of Tears. Right. Which it was out of these three territories right here, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. You may them go all the way here to Oklahoma. Texas. Yeah. All of Texas. Yeah. Texas. So they was called the they was called the five civilized tribes. The Cherokee, Choctaw, Muscogee, as you see, is the creek, the Chickasaw, and the Seminole. It was known as the five civilized tribes. Where was their area at? All of that. All of this was the area. All of that. All of that. Okay. And remember, notice that the five civilized tribes, most of them were part of what we refer to as this right here. The treaty with the Comanche, which is the Washita or Wichita nations. Once again, Cherokee, Muscogee, which is who? Creek, Choctaw, Osage, Seneca, and Quapa. So we come down again. And let's get to the land. Cherokee, Choctaw, Muscogee, which is Creek, all of that, all that land, that was us. So this is why you have all these so-called black people that migrated from the south up into the north. Okay. It was mostly southern tribes. The Washo were a Negroid tribe living above the New Orleans Bayou. It has been said that the Washo mixed in with the Malian Moors who came over, which was Abu Bakari and them, and produced the Yamasi. The Yamasi was in Florida, who became part of the Seminoles, who was in Georgia, who was also in South Carolina as there's still Seminoles in South Carolina to this day. Yamasee is the mother tribe of the Creek, <laughs> of the Seminoles, as I just said, the Avalanche, the Choctaw, the Chickasaw, the Catawba, and the Cherokee, as well as many other tribes. All these same tribes are the same tribes that we just said we had a treaty with the United States and was not United States citizens, but we were Wichita or Washita nations. Notice that. You get that? This is the problem, all right? This is the problem that they have with trying to um, um, pigeon toe us into their selective memory. 
as you see, we've gone way outside of their memory scale because they can't remember no further back than 6,000 years. <laughs> I've done with the 2.8 billion years on that ass. So right here, these newly formed tribes of Yamasee, Koshan, Kowan, and Kongari was known as Katawa. The Kadaba speaks a dialect of the ancient Kushite language, which were bit and pieces of the original Omec African language. And the Kataba lived in South Carolina. Here it is. The Yamasee and the Gullah Geechee Wars, the Unconquered, the Florida Negro Wars, Black Seminoles and the Second Seminole War, History of the Second Seminole War, and then you have the history of the Third Seminole War. These damn wars almost lasted 100 years and they can never defeat us. This is what they have not told us. The Yamasee, who I just showed you, were all of those tribes yeah. that was produced by the Cherokee, the Choctaw, the, all of those tribes that we just showed that was part of the so-called five civilized tribes, that was so-called part of the Wichita nations. They never defeated us. This is unconquered. We fought them for almost a hundred some odd years and they never could win. So what they had to do was result to the pen is mighty had the sword and wrote us out of history. We became Negro blacks and colors. We can never be connected to our, because you had some seller as Negroes who said, um, we're gonna go on to sell this out. We ain't gonna fight no more. We want the land. So they gave them what? Reservations. The other ones who did not accept the reservation shit, we became Negro Blacks and Colors by definition, African Americans. So therefore we no longer had our heritage and being indigenous and Aboriginal. This was the trick. So the Black Seminoles mentioned earlier, the tribe called Washington Moors with this Native American tribe, where are they now? Well, the Washington were direct descendants of the Omex who mixed them with the Malian Moors. The name Washington came from the Washoe River, which flowed, from, well, it didn't come from the river. The river got its name because we was there, all right? But Washington is originally from the lower Mississippi, actually from Mexico, as the Omex were, because we are their descendants, lower um, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama. The tribe was officially named Wichita, all right, which is in Wichita, Kansas. That was actually the name of the city by us, by the United States government at the Camp Holmes Treaty of 1835. This tribe was unmistakably a Negro tribe. The Wichita also known as the Panawasha, or by the French, the Pioes, which of uh, um, Piawasa, which means Black Pawnee. French traders from Illinois called them the Penny Pico, which means tattooed Pawnee. The Watchtower and the Rack or the Rackle people was known as Rackle because of their faces. They described the Watchtower, the French described the blacks who lived in large grass houses. The Watchtower called themselves the Kitiches, which is the um, interpretation of the raccoon eye. The term was later shortened to coon. So remember during the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, they say uh, they used to call black people coons because they was talking about us being Watchtower. The tomatoes being washed to See, this is all the tricks of the trade. They throw on black face and, and coon it out. Yeah. Didn't they call some Caucasians coons too? Mm hmm. It was a Negro that was passing for white. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so the Washington Moors are the so called lost tribe of Indians that was spoken of in the history books. Yes, they are the hidden tribe that was the descendants of the Omex Toltecs of Mexico. The Washington tribe will also be these ascendants or uh, 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 ancestors to the various tribes of the Pawnee, Osage, Creek, Seminole, Cherokee, Ch um, Ch um, 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 Ch Catawba, Comanche, Nice Piers, Tuscarora, Jeniskin, uh, Mana, um, um, Matapane, uh, Powhatan, Micmac, Lumbee, Mandan, um, Blackfoot. Now remember, these are some of the, these are the exact same names that you've seen. A lot of these names were just seen on the Treaty of Camp Holmes. <laughs> All right, Nets, Chiefs, Chickasaw, and many more tribes. Who is the Blackfoot? They keep saying Blackfoot, but I don't know what that is. They call this the Tar Heel State. No clients, the Tar Heel State, because it's talking about the Blackfoot Indians. Well, you know who really the Blackfoot Indians are? 
They're called the Hawani Sapani tribe, and they right up the street here. A lot of the Richardsons that's in this area are all part of the Hawani Sapani tribe. Matter of fact, all of them. The Hawani Sapani tribe, H-A-W-I-I Sapani, S-A-P-O-N-I. The Hawani Sapani tribe. And they right all around here, right here. And this is why it was called the Tar Heel State and why they say about the Black Feet or the Blackfoot Indians. This is who they was talking about. Some more books, Seminole Wars, America's Longest Indian Conflict. They say Indian conflicts, but then when you find out who they was fighting, it was us, then they got a problem. <laughs> the Florida Seminole Wars, the Seminole Wars, Florida Seminole Wars, all right? So we fought them for over 100 years. And they, matter of fact, could, we, could, could prevail. Matter of fact, this is Brigadier General who sent me Jessup, June 1837, in American states, papers, military affairs, cited by Kenneth W. Porter, the Negro on the American frontier. I'm the Negro. This, you may be assured, is a Negro. Not an Indian war. If it is not speedily put down, the South will feel the effects of it, of the slave population before the end of the next season. If the war be carried on, it must necessarily be one of extermination. We have at no former period of history had to contend with such a formidable power or enemy. No Seminole proves false to this country, nor has a single instant ever occurred of a first-rate warrior having surrendered. That's why we've seen Brooklyn as unconquered. We've never been conquered. They had to write this shit in history. This is why they had to defraud us historically. They couldn't beat us. They couldn't beat us physically. Throughout my operations, I have found the Negroes, the most active and determined warriors. And during the conferences with the Indian chiefs, I ascertained they exercised almost an almost controlled influence over them. The Negro ruled the Indians. The Negroes ruled the Indians because the Indians knew their heritage. It wasn't that we ruled them, it was that they knew that we was their mothers and fathers. Here's the Seminole Indian chiefs described as Negroes. So really, it was one and the same. <laughs> Commissioned in 1820, but no American official explain how it happened. If the Negroes were but chattel of the Indians, that so many Seminole chiefs were black. Obviously we wasn't chattel, we wasn't property of yeah. the Seminoles. They try to say how the, the Indians took the colored people in and all that. Right. This is how they try to get black Indians. But remember, we just showed you that we was already here as Indians 5,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago. Anybody that was found here before Christopher Columbus was considered an Indian. Uh-oh, I'm gonna say that again. Anybody that was here before Christopher Columbus 400 years ago was considered an Indian. Right here, another great chieftain was Mekanopo, king over kings, described as a part Negro, a very black, who ruled the nation in 1832 and owned immense herd of cattle and ponies. Black Bole, his nephew, was led the last hostility against the United States in 1855, 1858, was also part Negro. Louis Pacquico, a pure blood Negro who planned date um, massacre. Of course, date is what? Is a, a Miami date. And afterward became a Seminole sub-chief, could read, write, speak English, French, Spanish and Creek. Having been a slave, this is what they're trying to say now, having been a slave of a cultural Spanish uh, um, planter near Tampa Bay. The most important, if not known, of the Seminole chiefs was a pure blooded Negro named Abraham, who, because of his intelligence and knowledge of English, negotiated nearly all the treaties with the United States Commission. Of him, General Jessup said, a good soldier and an inter um, um, intrepid. Um, leader. He is chief and the most cunning and intelligent Negro we have. 
Now, remember, this is the same one who just said, God damn it, y'all don't put these niggas down. <laughs> God damn, we ain't never fought nobody like this before. <laughs> we never fight nobody like this. This is what he just said, right? He just said it. He said, look, we ain't never fight nobody like this. These, 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 these jokers don't surrender. Ain't, 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 they, ain't they, you they can talk to them, ain't no dance. Ain't nobody saying chat. We, they, these jokers fighting for real. That's the way we used to be. Now we got a whole lot of sell out ass niggas now. We got none of this blood in them. During the 19th century, the Seminole storyteller relates some of the Yamasee men was killed in battle and the Seminole men married the Yamasee women, Pensacola Gazette, October the 9th, 1824. Wherever a Seminole appeared darker than his fellow, it was said that his Yamasee ancestry was showing. So it wasn't, they, they even mixed with the so-called Negroes from out of slavery, they mixed with the Yamasee, who we show was the mothers and fathers of most of the tribes, who was the Omex. He was part of the Washita, and the Washita was direct descendants of the Omex. That's where the Yamasee came from. You just see this. So this is all the tricks, tricks of the trades, and I'm busting this shit up. It's over. Yamasee men were killed in battle, and, they submit, and the Seminole men married the Yamasee women, as we just said. Yamasee War 1715, so we fought them once again, 1715, all the way to what year? 1858. More than 100 years, almost 150 years we fought them. And they couldn't prevail. They couldn't beat us. Couldn't beat us. We was unconquered. There it is. The Yamasee Gullah Geechee Wars. The unconquered. They never conquered us. We believe that nonsense. We fought them wars from 1715 all the way to 1858. They, have, they fought against the Seminoles. They fought us against as the Yamasee. They fought us as the Gullah Geechee. All the same people. For 100 and almost 150 years, we effed them up. <laughs> they couldn't fight against us. That's just what it is. This is this is the painting that shows you. Look at that head chopped off. You got on his little clan outfit. Oh, you coming out clan? We gonna get your ass too. That's the painting showing you right there. Well, it looks like a damn trash can. You, you get that shit you know, on the arm. <laughs> We're going to hit you with it. They were strong because that stuff is not um, like uh, axes. Right. And you see axe, swords, what looks like trash can shields, bows and arrows, and our flag, our red flag. That was the flag, yo. That was the Negro flag, as they refer to it as. That red flag was the same flag that George... Washington is said to have chopped down, which is called the cherry tree. And uh, what's her name speaking in that room? Hillary. Mm -hmm. This is how the Seminoles look. Look at that. That was us. It's the Seminoles. Seminole chief, Caesar Bruner. Who that look like? Seminole Factory, son of Chief Hardy Factory. Who that look like? These are the Seminole yes. Indians, the descendants of Georgia, South Carolina, Muskogee Creek tribes. Your ancestors. Your ancestors. That's the one left. Your yes. ancestors. Uh huh. Our family owe all America with their pre-black, pre-colonial, aboriginal nation identities until the United States Corporation stripped our grandparents of their self-governance and land title by reclassifying our grandparents from Indians to legal fictions, landless, meaningless, black, Negroes, mulattoes, colored, African-Americans, or censored records. And that's what happened. If you don't believe me, get the book, A History of African Omex, Black Civilizations of America, from prehistoric times to the present era. This is Brother Paul Alfred Barty. 
he died, lay salam upon him. But this is what it says in the book, among the other black nations who existed in the Americas before Columbus and long before Christ were who? The Yamasee Indians, who had a lot. Now, these are the Yamasee. <laughs> look at them, wow. who they look like. Who had a large kingdom in the southern eastern United States. In other words, these was mostly who they well, I showed you with the Cherokee tribes yeah. was actually the Yamasee. Their descendants were among the first blacks of pre-Columbian American origin to form victims to kidnap them for the purpose of enslavement. The descendants of the Yamasee are the millions of blacks who live in Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Northern Florida. There it is. There it is. No, but then you go another book, Carolina Genesis, Beyond the Color Line. What does that say? Well, here it is. The Yamasee Indians or Jamasi, also referred to as the what? Amor Gorican, the Amara Caris, and who? The Americario. The Americario. Oh, that's still the American. That is the Americans. Ain't that something? So when you say that you're American, you're saying that you're a Yamasee Indian, which is all the tribes, the Choctaw, the Cherokee, the Creek, which is the Muskogee, all of them, were listed among the 19th tribes as being of dark complexion, found scattered among the inhabitants of North and South America. They were assumed to be immigrants from Africa prior to the European discovery of America, whom prior to the European discovery of America, Lucas um, Van Cuis de um, Alion persisted in slave hunting in Beaufort, South Carolina in 1520. Alion referred to the Yamasee as Negroes being valuable laborers. So who they enslaved? They enslaved the Yamasee. They didn't take their asses to no goddamn Africa. They enslaved the so-called black people that was already here on the land. He just told you that, 1520. Elion refers to the Yamasee as Negroes, as being viable laborers. Matter of fact, the Spanish or Spaniards found one Yamasee Negro being equal to 10 Indians for work. And they therefore exported, um, exported their Indian Negroes and carried them to the West Indies to experiment with as slaves. United States Congressional Records, Congressional Set, Serial Set, um, United States um, um, Government Printing Office, 57th Congress, First Session, 50, um, House of Representatives, Document 179, Reports of the Industrious Commission on Agriculture and Agricultural Labor, Washington Government Printing Office, Year 1901, page 824. So you want to know where that is? It's right there. And here it is, the hidden Creek language of Yamasee. So if you're a Creek, you Yamasee. You Yamasee, you wash it all. God damn it, look wow. at that. I just broke it down for you. Made it real simple. Once thought um, extinct, the most influential North um, Native American nation has resurrected. The Yamasee Native Americans last seen in Northern Florida has returned. Being called one of the bloodiest wars of Creek and Muscogee people, the Yamasee Wars of 1715. The Yamasee, whose history shows is comprised of the Gale. Gale is the Gullah Gitche people. Tama, Uchi, Cherokee, Wichita, Creek, and more, as, as described by the governor of South Carolina, Crevin. He made claims all the tribes in that region were Yamasee which would explain why they had so many towns and villages over the United States. But the conversation is for a later time. Well, God damn it, ain't got later. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> All right, so right here, Black Wall Street, the descendants of Muskegee or Muskogee, Cherokee or Creek, indigenous Americans who immigrated to Indian Territory, Oklahoma, before and during and after the Trails of Tears. So you want to know where the so-called Black Wall Street come from? It comes from the Creek, the Muscogee, who are the Yamasee, who are the Cherokee, who are the Washita, who are the descendants of the Omex. This is where they come from. This is 
That was, and guess what? It was 36 blocks of more than, what? Uh, 36 blocks of more of, uh, I think it was 1,200, 1,600 businesses. 36 blocks of more than 1,600 businesses. We talk about two movie theaters. This is in the damn 1920s. We had movie theaters in the 1920s. Laundry mats or laundry or, or, or what do you refer to it now as? Um, not just laundry mats, but um, uh, 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 when, you, when you take your clothes out yeah, sometimes. The, uh, and dry cleaner. Dry cleaner, thank you. Dry cleaners and so forth and so on. We had all of that. And that song, they dropped the bomb on us. Yep, that's what they dropped the bomb on. And then, matter of fact, that's what the Gap Band, um, that was the name. The Gap Band came from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Greenwood. And that's why they made the song, You Dropped the Bomb on Us. You Dropped the Bomb on Us. <laughs> Baby. Yep, exactly. So these are the Black Seminole Scouts, 1870. Look at them. <laughs> well, these niggas don't look, these niggas don't look like Indians to me. <laughs> the last of the Seminole Negro Indian Scouts. Look at them. Look at them. These are all tricks that they've been doing for years, trying to confuse our ancestry. And the and the shit is over. No more fooling us. We got the truth now. Truth is here. We got it. Digging for the red roots. So we talked about the Treaty of, of Peace and Friendship, the Treaty of Camp Homes. Let's get back to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco, which actually is America. Mm -hmm. And why America, the United States is of America, America not of the United States. Check this out. My name is Mahir Abdel Razak El. I am a Cherokee Blackfoot American Indian who is Muslim. I am known as Eagle Sunwalker. I serve as a peace carrier warrior for the Northeast Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians in New York City. Okay, now remember this Cherokees in New York City. Cherokees in New York City. Remember that. There are other Muslims in our group. For the most part, not many are aware of the Native American contact with Islam that began over 1,000 years ago by some of early Muslims travelers who visited us. Some of these Muslim travelers ended up living among our people. For most Muslims and non-Muslims of today, this type of information is unknown. They've never been mentioned in any of the history books. There are many documents, treaties, legislation, and resolution that was passed between 1600s and 1800s that showed Muslims were in fact here and were very active in the communities in which they lived. Treaties such as the Peace and Friendship that was signed on the Delaware River in the year 1787. What? Was signed on the Delaware River? I thought the Treaty with Peace and Friendship was in Morocco, in Africa some damn well. What the, is it doing in Delaware on the Delaware River? Which is here. Four states up from here. Right, right. <laughs> Cause we got Virginia, we got Maryland, but man, actually we got Delaware. So actually, only three states up if you don't want to count North Carolina itself. <laughs> wow, right here in the year 1787, and it bears the signature of Abdullah Cat and Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. This treaty details our continue right to exist as a community in the areas of commerce, maritime, shipping. Hold up, if that's the case, then that means that when they speak of the wars in the Treaty of Camp, in the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of Morocco, then it's really talking about the Moors who are the Cherokee. He just said it, because he said, this treaty details our continued right to exist as a community in the area of commerce, maritime shipping, current form of government at that time, which was in accordance with Islam, not Christianity, which we fell into, according to a federal court case for the Congressional Congress, we helped put the breath of life into the newly framed constitution. All of the documents are presently, are presently in the National Archives, as well as in where 
the Library of Congress. Reason why AA222141 was put in the Library of Congress, the National Archive showing that we are still here. <laughs> so, Native Americans' contact with Islam began over 1,000 years ago. All right, we showed you 2,000 years ago, excuse me, not 2,000, 200 years before Columbus, who was here, Abdel, or in this case, Mansa Abu Bakari II. Then we showed you earlier that 800, almost 900 years before Columbus, we was already here. So that means that that 800, 900 years during that time period was when they talking about this 1,000 year old connection here, where we came. So this is, once again, impact at the impact at the impact at the impact. Once again, it says it was signed on the Delaware River and the Cherokee, and he was one of the Cherokees from out of New York. So let's look at this. Treaties such as peace and friendship that was signed on the Delaware River in 1787. There's the signature. Well, that's D. So let's go to it. The record or recorded history of the Cherokee shows them living in many places at different times. There is linguistic evidence that the Cherokee was involved in another major migration before recorded history. The Cherokee language is linguistically related to the language of the, of the Iroquois, whose historical homeland was part of what is now New York State. <laughs> this suggests that the people later known as Cherokee was once part of the Iroquois, and they probably, as a result of the feeling warm, moved from the southern Appalachian area. The Encyclopedia Britannica states that the uh, say that the Cherokee lived along uh, around the Great Lakes before their migration to southern Appalachia. Another source identifies the Iroquois as having migrated from the lower Midwest. That means that the Cherokee could have separated from the other Iroquois by branch north to the east as the main body migrated to the northeast. So we know that the Cherokee was in New York and keep going on. And we're going to show you these connection pieces. Because remember, we just had Mayer just admit that he was a New York Indian Cherokee and that it was signed on the Delaware River, this treaty of peace and friendship. But what he doesn't say is what I'm getting ready to show you in a few. The Iroquois or Hostino uh, um, Sani were a powerful Northeast Native American Confederacy, uh, Confederacy, yeah, who lived primarily in Ontario, Canada, and upstate New York for well over four years. Technically, Iroquois refers to the language uh, rather than the particular tribe, but early on, it began to refer to as a nation of Indians made up of five tribes, including the Seneca, the Odadaga, the Onida, the um, Kyoga, and the Mohawk. The other tribes of Iroquois um, stock that was not part of the Confederacy was the Hera, um, um, the Teo, Nanitati, the neutral nation of uh, Ontario, the Erie and Comstaga in Ohio and Pennsylvania, and the Mahari. The Mahari is here in North Carolina, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, um, we have the Mahari River right down the street. And then if you go towards um, Hus um, Huskoski, uh, um, um, that is Mahari territory too. So not away to um, Tuscarora and the Cherokee of Virginia and Carolina. The name Iroquois is a French derivative undisputed, of disputed origin and meaning, but may possibly come from the Algonquin word um, Irinaco, meaning real snakes, and that is where it comes from. The Algonquin tribe denotes hostile tribes as snakes. They call them, um, they call themselves Hasdeno Saudi, which means people of the longhouse. So we just showed and proved that the Cherokee were the Iroquois at one time. They spoke the same language or dialect. All right, so here uh, we find, um, I just want to read a portion of this. 
right here. Egyptian, Greek, Phoenician, Hebrew origin of Cherokee. So the Cherokee was the Egyptians? Wow. That explains what we've just been talking about the whole time. We just finished saying that the Cherokee are the Egyptians, the Greek, which you asked the Minoans, not the Greeks that we know of, the Phoenicians, which is the Etruscans also, which are of Rome, the original black people up there, and the Hebrew origin of Cherokee. So, okay, we keep going on. So, read this book, The Old World Root of the Cherokee, how DNA, ancient alphabets, and religion explains the origin of America's largest Indian nation by Donald Yates. But hold up, let's go here. Who are the Cherokee? Look, they're related to the Phoenicians, and who's the second one? Yes, <laughs> Look at that. The Berbers, the Berber. Cunis, the Canaanites, Jewish, Melungeons, Carthaginians, Turks, Greeks, Mesopotamian, Egyptian, North African, Nanakos, Gideon, Cubans, Portuguese, and Creoles. These are all black people, mixed people. And that's who we talking about. So the Cherokee with the Moors. So when we just read this right here, and he basically said, my right here, my right here, right here, he says, there are many document treaties, legislation, and resolution that was passed 1600, 1800 that showed Muslims, in fact, very active in the communities. Treaties such as the Peace of Friendship that was signed on the Delaware River in 1787 bears the signature of Abdullah Khat and uh, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. This treaty details our continued right to exist as a community. Well, hold up. The Treaty of Peace of Friendship only mentioned Moors. It don't mention Cherokee. So he's telling you that the Cherokees were Moors. And we just seen historically, that's who they are. We just seen it. It was proven in this book. We just saw it. Right and wrong. Old world roots of the Cherokee. They're Moors, Phoenicians. So right here. Let's look at this. Origin of the Indians. This is a Rutledge. This is what he says. I have somewhere read that the language of the ancient Carthaginians is still spoken by their descendants inhabiting the mountainous um, interior part of Barbary to which they are obliged to be retired by the con conquering Arabs. If so, a vocabulary of their tongue can still be got. And if friends, you can still get one of the what? Creek languages. The Creek language. So the Creeks spoke what? Phoenician, Canaanite, which is Moorish. Don't believe me? Keep going on here that among the disputed ancestors of the Aboriginal American Indian population, natives are who? Moors and Turks. This is from the Federal Depository of New York State, the Handbook of North American Indians, page 290. Uh-oh. Begin somewhere. Get the book, The Moorish Empires, Historical um, Epitome by Bridget Meekin, 1899. The Moorish Empire. And he said that there was indeed a Moorish Empire here and at least discovered America first and had in, uh, international treaties with the Indians since they ruled not Spain, but the whole earth. That's what happened. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship was between the Moors and the United States of America. It was signed on June 10th, 1787. If Morocco was founded in 1956, who signed the treaty in 1787? Mm -hmm. Well, we just know who it was. It was the Cherokee, right? Here it is. Get the book, Moors and Masonry, by Brother Abdul El Talib Mosey Bay. It says, scholars who have researched the history of the Moors in Spain write that the Moors was defeated in 1492. This evidence would clearly show that the Moors were in power far beyond 1492. This claim of Moors being um, defeated in 1492 supports the theme of European world conquest and colonialism. After reading the chapters, the reader will understand that the transatlantic slave trade story is the key to the Europeans maintaining occupation and colonization of Moorish land. As a result of the transatlantic slave trade story, millions in 
conquered and defeated Moors, classified as black, Negroes, colors, and African Americans truly believe that their ancestors were transported on slave ships by the Portuguese, Spaniard, French, Dutch, and English between 1500 and 1800. Today, the conquered and defeated Moors are not competent to claim their lost estate. And God damn it, I am. <laughs> the conquered, defeated, subjugated, and the denationalized Moors classified as black, Negro, colored, and African-American in the United States Census Bureau has been indoctrinated through social engineering, linguistics, and geographical distortion to refer to the European colonies as such, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts Bay, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, um, New York, North Carolina, Rhode Island and Provident plantations as named of various land mountains. These are the 13 so-called colonies, 13 English colonies, had no acreage, mile, um, latitude, longitude, mountain, hills, river, lakes, bays, ocean, um, um, bridges, uh, beaches, airways, roads, highways, etc. That is that the aforementioned 13 English colon colonies were not real or actually physical bodies of land. There were artificial entities that was created on paper only. When one claimed to live in or to be born in or go to or be in one of the European colonies and occupy body politics, one is unsuspectingly claiming to be an artificial corporate entity and not a flesh and blood breathing being. The European um, symbolographers um, have created legal jargon to maintain control of the Moorish territory so, of sovereignty to continue the human trafficking of the conquered, defeated, subjugated, and denationalized Moors in, the Moor, in their Moorish lands. This awful project project that the Moors and Masons will, pro, will provide the conquered and defeated Moors with some substantial document, ev documentary evidence as to put the Moors on the right path of knowledge and to publicly declare their Moorish nationality and make the lawful claim of their Moorish government. Moorish Devane, Moorish National Sovereignty, Moorish Sovereign, and governmental titles of Bay, Gay, El, Al, and Ali. The Imperial Impotate, um, um, Potate, um, Sovereign Grand Commander, Royal Monarch, Illustrious, Freeholder, Free White Person, as well as their birthright inherited Moorish territorial sovereignty and land. Benjamin Franklin, all right? This is what he says. He says, all of Africa, Asia, and America are swarthily black. Russia, Russia, Italy, Spain, France, Sweden, and the Germans are black, okay? Dark-skinned black people arrived in Europe 40,000 years ago and retained their dark-skinned black skin far longer than originally thought. Right? And keep that in mind. So here we got, we're not just Africans, the black Native Americans, Clyde Winters. He said, we're not just Africans is the title of my book because Afro-Americans were more than descendants of Sub-Saharan Africa. We have been lied to about black history, our ancestry, including black Europeans and black Native Americans. When I grew up, my mom made it clear that we was part Choctaw. So in 1968, 1969, I took a survey in my school, DeSalle, um, in Chicago, and found that over 40% of my classmates had Indian heritage. Chalk talk. All right? Chalk talk. So right here, reinvest, uh, revisiting the Delaware Moors. Delaware Moors. Read this. I was a teenager when I first heard someone use the term Moor to refer to a member of the central um, sex sex um, sex, sex um, county multiracial community, which claims and celebrate Native American ancestry. More, I ask, confused thinking of Northern Africans as most people do. What that mean? The response was whipped like a punchline. More nigger than anything. More nigger than anything. I don't know. It was that time, but C. A. Um, Westlag had mentioned a similar tongue-in-cheek explanation of the odd label in the book 
never we're forgetting oh, the story of the Moors and Nanakos published in 1943. So they know that we were Moors. <coughs> it's in a book called Delaware's Forgotten Folks, the story of the Moors and Nanakos. So here, this is the word and phrase, all right? Even the word nigger is often a derogative term applied to who? Indians, as well as blacks up until recent times. Yeah? Well, this is why we find the Birmingham niggas, as you see here, white folks was on that team. <laughs> but the marker, the logo, was a black man with crispy hair. And it's the same exact um, uh, face, except they put it on the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> Notice that. A dark skinned person of any origin in early United States used usually as reference to American Indians. Nigga, you don't say person of any origin. Keep showing you over and over again who we are. Thanksgiving at the Shinnecock Reservation in 1953. Who these people look like at the Shinnecock? <laughs> look like grandma, look like uh, granddad, look like auntie. <laughs> yeah. And guess who Shinnecock? Rizza from the Wu-Tang Clan. And guess who spoke about it, who ended up getting killed, that was part of the Wu-Tang Clan, was Old Dirty Bastard. He was Shinnecock and he talked about his grandfather, his great-great-grandfather being the Shinnecock chief. Now, you look at him today, Old Dirty Bastard, you know, he's been passed now for years. He looked like a Negro. Same but his great great grandfather was the chief of the Shinnecock. And as you see here, the people of the Shinnecock still look cool. You can't see too well. I blew it up. There you go. <laughs> and then Sanford's son, too. Remember that one part of Sanford's son, how he showed he, well, he was part of the. Thanks. The Montauk Indian declared too black to be native in court, 1910. So they love taking this. See, these are the people who didn't go for the reservation shit and sold us out. <laughs> but they still knew who they were. The French called the Mingos Iroquois in the Lenape Empire they call Algonquin, which was a corrupted word of the Lenape word, Algomiwin. This is the Lenapes. The Cherokee and the Lenape, we talk about this area here, which as you see, is New Jersey and New York area. Once again, once again, this whole area here, as you see, they call this the settled area of 1740, the American colonies, but it was not the American colonies because they was a part of America. This is what we keep saying over and over again. Nanakos and the Moors, folks medicine. The Delaware, Shoni, the Shinnecca, um, the Mohicans, and the other Eastern Indians claim that their forefathers originally received their knowledge of Matapa Sinkun from a tribe called the Nanakos. So the Nanakos are the mothers and fathers this is the Lenapes. And who are the Lenapes? The nation of the Lenny Lenapes is the most important nation of wars in the United States of American history. This is due to the fact that if it wasn't for them, or there would be no United States of America. When William Penn first arrived at our country, he was given permission by the Sagamores to set up the government. He was not sold land, he was given land to occupy. The Sagamores never sold land because we understood that it was not our land to give. We knew that the earth was and still is the gift of the great spirit to his chosen people, stewards by a grand shepherd. Right? In other words, a grand chief. Right? So here, the territory of the Napi was extensive. This is why a large portion of the United States has a Napi name, such as Mississippi, Michigan, Connecticut, Illinois, Minnesota. 
all right? Massachusetts, Missouri, Wisconsin, Arkansas, Wyoming, all right? The old territories are such as Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Delaware, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Virginia, the Carolinas, that's South North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, including Canada, all had the Nazi places and names before the moderate European names. So who are the Lenape? The Lenape are the Yamasee. Who is the Yamasee? They are the Washita. Who is the Washita? The Olmec, known as the She people. All of these people are the same people. Same people, y'all. The Nazis in New York. So the Cherokee was in New York, the Lenape in New York, same people. All of these are the same people. This is it. The Lenape in New York, the area was long inhabited by Lenape. Lenape in canoes met Giovanni di Verrazzano, as in the Verrazzano Bridge when you go to New York. All right? Um, right here, the Lenape, uh, many Lenape, later called the Delaware Indians or the Delaware Moors, as we've seen, they had an Algonquin language. All right, so this is record of Giovanni and what he's seen. He said that the Lenape, he said they were dark in color, not unlike the Ethiopians with thick black hair, not very long, tied back behind the head like a small tail. They was dark in color. In other words, some use the word black. Is entirely up to the translator, but not like un, un, unlike the Ethiopians. So he showed, he just told you that the Lenapis was dark skinned people, just like the Yamasi, the Yamasi, in which that we showed you earlier was related. All right, right here. This is the um, New Netherlands apparel um, um, from the book. And this is showing you the areas of, of um, Cape Cod, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Connecticut. And these are the people that they seen. This shows you right here. They painted it in the book back in the damn 1600s. 1671, as a matter of fact. He showed you who was here. Now hold up. Hold up. <laughs> See, this is the reason why we got to do our research. United States. Government in the New York City could have acted and settled this case long ago, which was brought to the attention. This is now, however, a much bigger issue at stake, and this is the destruction of the Moorish nation, which have been known as the on the Societa on Republica El Moracano, which translates to Al Moroccan Republics Republic Society. At the time of the founding of this country, America was called Al Moroccan because it was part of the Moroccan empire known as the Mexa. It was translated into America by the colonialists, and eventually a story was made up that America was founded by America Vespusky and Navigator. Any history teacher I, I, uh, I ever had who mentioned Vespusky always um, com um, committed how it made no sense to name America after a seemingly insignificant navigator. We now realized that this was significant motive to hide the history of what had transpired. All right, so this is, New York is called the Empire State. Okay, let's trace the, tracing, this is in the New York Times, y'all, tracing the origin of the Empire State, 1999. Here go the article. Bronx, seat of empire. Anyone who can read Washington's written reference to New York as the seat of the empire in a letter to the Common Council of City in 1789. So what was the seat of the empire of the Moors? You're talking about the Moorish empire, the seat of the empire of the Moors were in the Bronx, New York, the birthplace of hip hop. This is what they've been hiding from us. So we're gonna find out. Remember, who was in New York? The Cherokee and the Lenape. Washington tribes. They was there. 
What language did they speak? Algonquin. But it was called Moors, and they also spoke a form of Phoenician. Remember? This will be your show. So it says the phrase seat of the empire or one of the oh, of the empire had much currency in the early modern day. The political philosopher James Harrington used it in 1700s and various authors repeated it in 1800, including um, Matisse, um, James, John Adams, and Adam Smith. It lastly suggested the wealth of nations that the seat of empire, meaning British, no, it don't mean British, I'm lying. This is how they did that, don't mean British. The British were the brutish Moors. They talk about the Moors. Might soon migrate to America. I would guess that Alexander Hamilton, um, um, Washington's long, uh, Washington's long aide, and a New Yorker with a um, pink pinches for empire, put the phrase into the general lexicon. But in any case, it seems that Washington was writing or speaking of New York City as the seat of the of the Confederation. Hold up, the Confederation was the South. Remember the South, the war between the North and the South? You had the Confederation? Wow, it was then the capital. The more familiar and more um, um, parochial empire state did not gain currency until the Canal era of 40 years later. So this is all been trick show. New York was the Empire State, and this is what we find is that the Iroquois was there, which were the Cherokee, particularly, and the Lenape. All right, and I'm going to show you the last thing right here. The founding fathers did not find anything. They went to black Indians, the Iroquois nation, seeking assistance to break away from their chief back in um, England, King George III. The, the, the Iroquois nation taught them the system of government. The only part that the so-called founding fathers left out was the, um, the, um, the matriarchy. Black Indian women ruled the Iroquois nation. That's what they left out, the Mohawk. Negro leagues. These are the Mohawk Indians in the Mohawk Guard. The Mohawks was in New York. <laughs> so we understand that all these various tribes, Negroes, was in New York at this time period. And so when we find that George Washington, right, coded language, right, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. The term more, M-O-R-E, is code word for more. You don't believe me? Look at it, French, more French, M-O-R-E. So M-O-R-E is M-O-O-R. This is the trick, all right? French, M-O-R-E. It keeps showing us this over and over again. So when you say that we're here to form a more perfect union or society, you can't get more perfect. See, this is what we talk about how the Europeans was once um, the slave, the ruler, the Negro rulers of Scotland and the British Isles. The enslavement of the Europeans does not fit the general theme of European world conquest and colonization that is central to scholarship of early modern era. So they come up with the bullshit that they enslaved all of us and brought us all from Africa. White cargo, put that in history of the British white slaves of America. There was white and they were slaves, Irish slaves. The white slavery, all right? These are the people who actually owned these slaves. It was known as the so-called Arabs, the Islamic traders in Zanzibar, all right? This is how we get from the slave trade of the Arab slave trade to really, it was the um, Europe slave trade. And then we got the slave, same slave trade as the Moors who, are, um, who spoke um, Arabic and different other languages that we had them as slaves here, the white slaves of the New Orleans, the white slave traffic, all right, the white slavery, white men for debt, you know, um, this is what this really is. We own them. So this is important to realize, and these are the various books. Hakeem Bay states in the Nexus Magazine, History of the Bacon, 
it reads, there was a human cry in the newspapers in the Northeast banking interest to execute the president of the bank with the Confederate States of America in the South. For two years, the president of the South was kept in a dark, wet, cold cell in the side of an earthen fortress in Monroe, Louisiana. He was an ill and broken man when he was put there. He should have died. He was expected to die. When it was apparent that there was no way that ravaged and occupied South, which was ruled by Blacks, could ever revolt, he was released. So right there. In the Nexus magazine, they revealed that Blacks ruled the South. You can get these particular books here to verify that. A considerable portion of the Blacks of the Southern Negroes of the United States is unquestionably Indian. This is coming from the Smithsonian Institute. All right? This is the Confederacy. As you see, that was us, Louisiana. This is what they don't want us to know. Okay? What they don't want us to know. This is the Iroquois Confederation flag, in which that we believe is what flag? We believe this is the good old Confederate flag. Well, it is the Iroquois Confederacy, as we just showed you, the Iroquois was here, which is nothing more than the Cherokee. As you seen, we showed you earlier, the Cherokee ran the South. The Cherokee ran the South. Okay, so this is who the Iroquois was in New York and upper portion of New York, all the way down into the southern region. All this was us. The blacks ran the south, the blacks ran the seat of our confederacy was in the Bronx, New York. Who does remember? We talked about the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, George Washington writes a letter to Ibn Abdullah, who was one who, what? Muhammad Ibn Abdullah was the one who put his name on the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Where did he mail the letter to? City of New York. He didn't mail it to no goddamn Morocco. Morocco. He sent it to City of New York, December the 1st, 1789. This is what Moors miss. They miss that. Who's Muhammad Ibn Abdul, Sultan of Morocco? So where the goddamn seat of Morocco was at? It was in the Bronx, New York. City of New York, which is Manhattan. And right above Manhattan is the Bronx. Right across the bridge is the Bronx. The South, South Bronx, the South Bronx, the South, South Bronx. They tricked us. They lied. Now that's the end of this presentation. So. This is what we find out, how much they have lied to us. Only, right. The seat is the Bronx, New York. That's why New York is called the Empire State because it was talking about the Moorish Empire. The Moors who was there was the Cherokee, the Lenape, the Montauk, the Shinnecock, the Mohawks. These are all the, Moor, all the Moors who was in that area at that time. So. The chief of them, the sultan, was Muhammad ibn Abdullah, or Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Bey. Okay, that that is the key, though. Um, hold on, let me go to New York here. Any question about anything that we're going on? Oh man, where do I begin? <laughs> so, <clears throat> like, you know how when you do your 
like resend your voter registration, mm -hmm. the Democratic. Mm -hmm. You tell me you're not a citizen no. of the um, United States, right. but they still send you stuff anyway. Yeah, yeah, but that's because um, you had jumped the name with just Bay instead of changing the whole name over. So, like, they still send me stuff under the name of Jerome Dancy L. Bay. But they send me nothing as a Sarah Lane New Tupac L. Bay. Because they can't send it that because I didn't sign that. I didn't sign up for that voting right under that name. So, you simply get a, um, what, I think it's an 855 form uh what's the name for my because i don't know what i did so so that that's different than the one because they told me i had to fill out their form yeah. when i did it right right that's true this is for um registering to, to vote no this is for deregister registering the vote eight, eight, right eight, two say it again yeah. please eight eight three two a eight three two. Okay, can you say it slower, please? Eight eight three two. Eight eight three two. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I don't know what form I filled out, but I saw some form when I told them and I wrote them a letter also right. first. Then so, you know I'm not a citizen, blah blah blah. Yeah, they, but, they're not going to do anything like that. Right, <laughs> but pretty much um, like he was saying, the voter registration since we're not as citizens, we can't vote. We shouldn't right. vote. And because it's in their system, yeah. you're not part of their system. Correct. So I can, if, I, I can be registered, um, right. like, like you're doing right. now, right? Well, I already did it's it, it, it doesn't cost ago. anything either. No, it's no, free. You do an okay. 88324. This is 88832. And mm -hmm. for a re recent in the signature on my kid's birth certificate, could I do that? You just have to put it in writing, but it has to be filed at the register. Please. Okay. Because remember, that's where the fraud took place at, was in the hospital in the register of deeds. Well, I didn't go to the hospital. Okay, well, still, um, did they it's get a birth certificate? It was at the register of deeds. You know what? I have to look and see because she sent it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. so do I need a, is there a certain form I will have to fill out to resend my signature for the birth certificate? So, like, is there a certain form? Um, no, you can just put it on the public record of the register of deeds and state that those facts. Okay, so would that change anything for them? Um, so give them the ability in order to be, in, as far as being able to um, declare themselves as something as part of the Moorish um, Empire, part of the Moorish nation. That's the key, really. You know. Okay. We have a question. Yeah, I was asking what what, um, what was that that you're trying to do for with the birth certificate that you're trying to get your daughter? Or? Well, I had my kids at home, and um, oh, when I met I wife, we missed the birth. But mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do is re resend the my signature mm -hmm. on their birth certificate. Okay. Gotcha. So that's what I'm trying to do. So right, you can resend it on the birth certificate, but really what you want to do is capture it on the UCC1 financial statement uh -huh. and claim a lien. It. Okay, so I can I do you, it. I gave you the um, documents on claiming the lien. It. You can uh -huh. do it common law uh -huh. um, in the states that follow common law. If they don't follow common law, then you do a maritime lien. Okay. And you lien, and you lien those particular names. That's yeah, on the birth certificate. Um, okay. Your exemption is. Did you uh, update that recently? What's that an exemption? The the, va the vaccine, vaccine exemption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I have an I have an old one um, that I had gotten, but and I know recently uh, you had did one, so I wasn't sure if it, it was different. So right. Where you located that? Um, I'm. I'm now about to relocate from Pennsylvania to here. Okay. Another yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah. In Pennsylvania. Yeah. The last three people. Sisters from Pennsylvania, you from Pennsylvania, really? brother yeah. um, Neo was from Pennsylvania. Right, because so I this came, conference the, was the, the, Pennsylvania. The, the Neo came, then then you came. Mm -hmm. wow. So everybody's from Pennsylvania. Uh, you look familiar. What part of Pennsylvania? <laughs> um, I'm in Catasauqua. Where's that at? It's so so small. It's right next to Allentown. 
You know where the airport is? That small airport? Okay, you're not far from me. I'm in oh. Pittsburgh. So were you in Pittsburgh a couple times? I went to Pittsburgh once because my son, he plays football and he had tournaments out there. And I'm like, oh my God, I did not. Have you ever, have you ever went, so went clubbing? So far. Have you ever went clubbing? No. Okay, because I used to do the different like attendance and blah, blah, blah. So no, that's why I was wondering. Who knows? That. Right back. Okay. okay. Yeah, because yeah, it's a small world. So, but what I'm, but I'm saying, you, you're the third person who came from Pennsylvania. That is so funny. Yeah, me, the other guy, and you. So I was, I was going to ask you where you're from. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I wasn't gonna actually. It was out of okay, either Georgia, or Carolina, or Florida. So where you plan on going? Uh, we're gonna stay in Cary for now. What's Cary? Carrie is um it's by well, it's not far from Riley. So North Raleigh, North Carolina? Mm -hmm. oh, so you'll be moving down here, huh? Yeah. Yeah, like in a week. Yeah. I just came up here to get my keys. <laughs> oh, your keys for your place? Yeah. And um I was trying to avoid having to do all the back and forth and then I got an email saying that there was going to be an event this week. And I was like, well, maybe that's the reason why it worked out this way. And I said, oh, that would make me feel even better knowing that I didn't just come all this way just to get kicked. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll be back next weekend. For good? For good. Ah, right. So okay. I had to get my son transferred and everything. And um we refused to be vaccinated. Yeah, um, yeah. So and, and, and what you can do, they have certain ones. Plus the, the plus theirs, mm -hmm. they have a certain vaccine. Because my kids, they didn't get vaccinated when they went to school. There's a philosophical and religious belief you could do it for. And, and the nurse, everybody don't know this. It's the back of the car uh -huh. for the nurse's um, office, they have it where you can sign. Uh, exemption. Yes. Oh. I didn't know that either. So I read up on it. Wow. Yes. Know. They try to push it on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And you give them that. I did it for somebody else in Pittsburgh for their son. They haven't got their uh, their app, their app with them. They haven't got their, their shots or any of that. Okay. In Pennsylvania, I gave their, um, they did my affidavits to give to their principal. Mm -hmm. They had no problems after that. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to, I want to get that taken care of so that, you know, because I know what's coming. Right, because mm -hmm. um, I had them be mm -hmm. virtual for the last what year and a half. Uh huh. Um, but now coming, you know, coming here, I don't think they're going to even have that as an option right now. So, Do you, uh, like I said, at the back of the yellow card. Back of the yellow card. And then I'll give you my number. Okay. And you're saying plus them helping you, I'll help you mm -hmm. because every every state they should have some kind of exemption. You want to put in your phone and call me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I, I can't. And you, I can't, I'll write it down for you also. I can't do with this. Um, my job, I know they're, they're trying to even push it to. Same with your job. And um, because you have I'm a right in your one, body. I'm the only one in my department that refuses, so they keep ganging, ganging up on yeah, me. Yeah. Like, you know, what happened to, you know, correct. my body, my right? Correct. Like, You're right. Because a lot of these businesses, they're, they're cornering people and asking them, why haven't you taken it? It, they're bullying us. Correct. As Even my, my you know what you could you could sue your um, company for that too. You know that that's bullying. That's that's in the the EEOC. EEOC. Correct. Before you leave, I will put in a complaint to mm -hmm. sue them for bullying. That's a form of harassment. harassment. Yes. Yeah. I my son's pediatrician. Um, shoot, the last time he went to the doctor was. <sighs> maybe like two years ago because uh -huh. they they said if he doesn't get his full shot he can no longer be and i said no, that's no, that's below me no no so because you know, my, my kids my kids they don't have any of their shots they went to school i wish i knew better right well i didn't now. know because of my one my one i started giving her her shots then mm -hmm. i stopped i put in affidavits because I, I was, cause they, they scared me. Oh, you can go jail if your kids don't have their shots. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm and so I funny. was, I was scared. I was very scared. I was scared yeah. because I thought that they really had power mm -hmm. over me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my goodness. So I took her there out of fear. Mm -hmm. 
Cause I got, it was like after six months. You know how they did one day. I didn't have them at the hospital. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing is good. Well, that's good. They right. didn't have them at the hospital. Right. That's one thing is good. But my kid's father, he was like, what the? Uh, you should go to the hospital. You, I'm like, I'm yeah, go to the hospital. Tell us all, I mean, none of, none of my, none of my, um, all right, let me see. This. None of my mom's siblings, none of them were born in a hospital. Yeah, all at home. Yeah, so you already know because your 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 family's from somewhere else, and mm-hmm. you you where, where are you from? Barbados. Where so I was you? born there. Uh huh. I I grew up in Jersey. Uh huh. I then I moved to Pennsylvania. Okay. And now I'm coming here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So yeah. And then uh, put your name in here. I'll put my name in there. Okay. I'll switch. Um, at the contract. I'll do it. I know how to do it. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I had that kind of fun, I do it. Oh, good. This is see the older phones last so much longer though. You got that right. <laughs> Some sometimes. You don't have to worry about updates or nothing like that. I know, because my aunt was telling me how her phone was updated. She lost some of her information. Mm-hmm. Which is sad. You got to back up that. Yeah, it's annoying. Okay. That's how they control you in that way right there. Yep. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it here um, so you know where, where my last name. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put um, NC. So okay, from Pittsburgh. Wow. Yeah. Oh. And see. Oh, you have to add like okay. where I'm from. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, but I'm saying between him and I don't mind. Like mm-hmm. because if I didn't okay. research, yeah. I wouldn't have known what I know. Yeah. And I didn't like the hospital. I don't really care for hospitals. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. I like that either. I we I we have Oh, hell, what's his name? Oh, I need to, I need to get inf- how much information I can. Well, here's the thing. I'm you know, I don't. If, I think he went AWOL, and I, every time I would go see him, it, I knew he wanted to leave eventually. Um, like he was looking at like to leave the country completely. I'll give you his information though. Anyway, so does he still contact you at all? No. Even through, so through, through, through email? No. He like he he's very old school. Like he has no. Um, no about cell phone, we're, we're, we're only landline. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about getting rid of him. I'm not getting to landline too because mm-hmm. it's like a lot of people say to me, "You got a cell phone? Why don't you answer it?" I'm <laughs> like, "Cause I don't. I leave it at home sometimes. Mm-hmm. So me leaving it at home, I can't get in contact with you. You know what I mean? Right, right. So I'm gonna send it to you. Oh, Let's I can't see. get taxes. My text is full. Oh, I need yes. my email. Okay, that's okay. So that's, that's called, that's you. There, uh, it's called Earth Mother Herbs. Earth Mother E-R-T-H Herbs. R T H Mother. Mm-hmm. So if I send them a letter, they might get the letter. Seven, two, five, eight, Probably eight, better eight, off. W L E H I G H. Yeah, PA. Mm-hmm. You're third, like, like you were saying, you're a third person from PA. <laughs> There's a movement going on. <laughs> I, I I don't know. It's like a PPA trying to, you know, bringing us all together, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. Interesting. It must mean something. Or maybe sure. PA is the only only place that the show show whatever you know what I mean on the yeah I don't know uh, we'll we'll see maybe I'll run into other people too from Pennsylvania so yeah <laughs> all right so I'm gonna order that so we coming out to this uh, well, for now, until we figure out where we're going to permanently live, we're going to be in Cary for now. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. So I just I just sold my home, and mm-hmm. I said, you know what? It's time for change. We're, right. getting, we're getting out of here. And Cary is nice, though. Cary is Cary nice, is yeah. It's nice. nice. So, mm-hmm. you know what? Well, that's what we're getting ready to go in a few minutes is to um, Cary to Raleigh Improv. Oh, you see, um, the comedian. Oh, um, um, okay. Arnaz, he's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Did you sign up? You guys sign up for that? Oh, excuse me. I I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I have to 
I gotta go back tomorrow. Oh, okay. So I'll be, I mean, I'll work. I'm gonna, cause I'm still working remotely. I, right. I have to work um, tomorrow. And then once I'm done, then I'm getting back on the plane and going back. So, but I will be back next week. Okay. This is definitely my, my brother wanted to come so bad, my right. brother Barry, and well, he's he's watching my son for me. So, right, right, right. <laughs> but he may he may end up moving too. I can't ah. see oh. Yeah, I'm gonna. Can you use that? Real quick? <laughs> yeah, All right, thank yeah, you. Coming back south. Yeah, we all come back together. <laughs> My mom, she that creep leg coming on back. She here. she um she took an early retirement because she worked at the hospital, and mm -hmm. she's like, I'm not falling into that trap because right. you know they they were starting to bully them to mm -hmm. get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So she took early retirement, right. and now she's in Barbados. She's taking care of my okay. grandmother. Right. So she'll be there. For who, who knows how long, definitely. Right. 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 But she's doing so much better. Okay. You know, health wise, just at peace. Right. We're at peace. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we're all making changes in our lives right. for the better. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I love it. I love uh, it. No, that's what they're trying to do. They they got for real. Mm -hmm. They get all these bang dates and all of this stuff. Yeah. You know, people down here. You know, they tr even if they did make it mandatory or mandate, people isn't going to do it anymore. Yeah. So, well, that's you know. even better because you know, if you have more people that are fighting against it, then mm -hmm. that's that's good. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And these stupid um, strands they're talking about this strand, oh, that strand, yeah. you know, just the to Lambert scare strand, you. The Delta strand. Yeah. Like, Yeah, it's less it's scary. Right, it's good tactics. And, it's, it's, and a it right. yeah. and it's worse. It's nothing. I'm gonna yeah. use your restroom. Go ahead, just um okay. to the back, to the right, down the hall, to the left. Okay. Watch your step. When you go in, there's a step. You gotta there's step up. So <laughs> I tripped over the first time. Oh yeah, that's as soon as you go through right here to the right, step up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm at last time I did and um. You know that back quarter that you that you um I was looking at that before I came. You know they consider that a rare quarter. Oh yeah, yeah, with the back yeah. Yeah. They consider that a rare quarter. Yeah, huh? I looked on I looked online before I came here yeah, as yeah, far as quarters. We always got it's huh? rare. Yeah, 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 but I'm just saying what what they what they what they say it's yeah. supposed to be rare. Right, right, and it's not rare. So yeah. <laughs> That one and another one, like the, the tree one too. Oh, okay. The tree one. That's supposed yeah. to be rare. Yeah. Okay. And like I say, I guess it depends on who you who you um who you talk to. Right, exactly. Who you talk to. Hey, uh, I wanna get something off from you guys. Okay. Again, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so do you guys? Will you guys be going back and forth to um, Pittsburgh and here, or just be just be here for good? No, here for good. Okay, so okay. Next weekend we'll be here for good. Ah, okay, okay. 
before that snow starts. Oh, yeah. oh come on, let me talk about oh, snow, please. please. <laughs> I'm done with the snow. Well, well it's a little bit that's going to be here, but there will be nothing, well, nothing, like nothing that you got to shovel. Yeah, yeah, I was just talking to a lady here. She was telling yeah, me how yeah. two years ago or a year ago, this is the first time they had minus seven here. I was like, for real? That's it. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. But she said that's her first time. All the yeah, time she's been the here, time. right? Oh, yeah. Right. So, so yeah, that's what she was saying. How her pipes had bust for that when happened it, to me. Oh yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you moved out of your daughter. Yes, I will, be, I will be back. Okay. Don't bring my son. All right. You know, because I'm like. Oh, like, your son. He's 14. Okay, okay. So uh -huh. you need to learn the truth. He's, he's an age. You, 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 yeah, you, then you guys can have him do sign up. When are you guys going to have him do Tai Chi classes? Uh, you have to I mean, like, how do you have a class every Wednesday? Okay, and then mm -hmm. I need the information for the class for the. I have to send it to you. Okay, let me give you the for this right here. Website, though, like all the activities that you have going mm -hmm. on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we have free classes every Wednesday, though. Okay. Free classes every Wednesday, right here. So we go into more information and exercise, health, and everything. Mm -hmm. Is there tax on your stuff? Uh -huh. Is there tax on your books? No, uh, no taxes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. See, I have, like I told you, I have other ones, mm -hmm. but it's like maybe you gotta do different ones. Right. That. I'm just gonna give you.